So for those tuning in, welcome. This is Crash Bash. I am It's Elite MN, and with me I have Logic also PQ. Logic PQ is a great speedrunner of Bash as well, who was actually, for those wondering, me and him, fourth and fifth to get sub two hours in this game. Quite amazing. But we're going to be doing any percent here, which requires us to beat four bosses, and to get to those bosses we have to do a specific amount of challenges, which are trophies, gems, and crystals. And I will be using my boy Tiny. As you see, there's eight choices, four good, four evil. In my opinion, Tiny's the best character, and you have a set AI that you receive, but you can choose between scientists or bandicoots. I choose Brio because he actually picks up a little slower and throws a little slower than Cortex, which makes it slightly easier to deal against, but not guaranteed. Alright, so to get started here, we're going to be going off into Polar Panic. Uh, which a lot of the community likes to call Fuller Prison, uh, because oftentimes you'll find yourself uh, resetting here quite often. Uh, but luckily for you guys, you won't have to be here much longer than three or four minutes. Yeah, basically the general strategy. Here. Oh, man, sorry. No, you're good. If the, basically for Polar Panic, the trophy warp one as a whole is basically an introduction to the game you know nice and simple it's kind of tricky but not bad in the trophy of polar panic all it takes to win is an ai just has to go to the edge they don't even have to fully fall off as you can see right okay he fell off i thought he wasn't going to bad example <laughs> i wonder if i can just usually uh usually they will recover because you can recover from the edge in this in this game type uh, but in the trophy only, in the first, in Polar Panic, they are unable to recover. Uh, it, it's set to like a very easy difficulty, essentially. Right, and it's, it's very weird because it's one of those things where it's like, you see that and you expect the game to be very easy, and then little do you know, it's literally just setting you up for failure in the long run. So sure. <laughs> All right, and that's the trophy, just like that. Every trophy requires three wins. You don't have to get them in a row. As you can see, there's a whole scoreboard, so like if an AI will win, they'll get one, and we don't want them to win, because if, if an AI gets three points in the trophy, you have to do the whole thing over again, whether you have no wins or you know many wins. Realistically, you don't want them to win ever. Uh, there's no advantage to it. It just loses lots of time. <laughs> that is very true, but there are instances where it's almost very unlikely that you would win in the given circumstances and speaking of not winning right there sometimes you kind of it's all about timing with the polar levels with your uh, what we call counter pushing which is you want to wait for the AI to usually push first and then you will push slightly after they do which will negate them from being able to actually recover but for whatever reason in this gem the AI are so like going from 1 to 10 real quick and it's kind of random whether they'll target you or each other, which kind of seems like they're targeting each other more than me. And yes, I, I've heard it said that the, this gem in particular, it, it, some people in the community like to call it the Sapphire Relic of the, you know, of the start here. It's, it's a pretty difficult gem compared to the trophy. It, they're immediately uh, much smarter, heavier, just uh, they kind of have the whole package going here for whatever reason. The yeah, we're just really, really mean that day when they just want to in the gem. Yeah, and this and this game to mention was made by the company Eurocom, which this was usually their uh, first like main game that they developed on. So it was kind of their first take on making a game. So you know there was obviously some things that they probably could have done better, or you know lots of things. But you know it's it's whatever. It's it happens. You know, but I feel like there was some slightly wrong coding errors, you know, maybe with like the AI difficulty, unless they intended it to be just crazily random, but you know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Not I have to agree with you, at least with the gem, because uh, when you come to the crystal here, it's actually, the AI are significantly easier than, than the gem was, which doesn't really make sense in, in terms of like difficulty scaling. It's like you get harder and then you get easier again. Yeah, and, and one thing to mention as well, because there are five different types of challenges for each level. You only see three to start because you have to progress far into the game to unlock uh, gold and, um, I believe, are they gold and platinum, right? Platinum relics, yes. Say which They kind of look blue, but got a red gem in the middle of them. But anyway, you, you don't see relics in any percent. You only see relics if you do anything past Oxide. Yeah, we won't be doing any relics in this, in any percent. 
And one thing you'll note, at, especially with this level, is you won't see me do the gem or crystal here because you only need a set amount of gems and crystals and trophies. You need every trophy, that's a given, but gems and crystals, you only need 15 gems and 12 crystals, so we pick and choose the fastest. Sometimes if you're newer to the game, you'll pick the safest gems and crystals just to make your life a little easier and make the game more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I think there, but the, that's one of the cool things about this game is you can kind of choose your own route. There are 22 levels in the 80% category, so you're getting all 22 trophies. But uh, you can pick any 15 of those for the gem and then 12 for the crystal or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, because your 80% route can be whatever you want it to be. It can be as hard as you want it to make it. And I, I saw there's a guy in the Crash Dash community who used to run the Skyball's pistol, which you guys won't get to see in this, but it's an infamous sort of pistol in his knee or So he just decided that was a good idea. I don't really know why he did that, but. And Skyball's Crystal, if we were to go way underestimate, would make for a really good incentive to be made to challenge me to complete that crystal within five attempts after the run. That would be a good incentive. That's true, actually. That would be a good one. Um, but to go back to um, trophies, gems, and crystals, so we kind of explained the trophies already. You know, you just have to win three rounds. It's first to three. Normally, like Logic mentioned earlier, you, you don't want them to win. Like, we, we put that option out there, but we don't want them to win. So... It's just, you get to three, you get the trophy, and then we have the gems, which normally are time limit or score limit, or both, dependent, so in that polar level. I mean, the AI difficulty does increase, you know, that's just kind of, we assume that with the challenges, but I only had a minute to beat that gem instead of a minute 30, which normally the levels with the time limit will always be 130 for, like, the trophies. And, that, and that's sort of uh, one of the things that comes up here is when you see uh, some of these levels that seem to be more like uh, almost like auto scores. That, that is definitely, at least with this one, that is definitely not the case. Um, with the timer ones, it is. Uh, so the pogo levels you will see uh, most of the time. You're basically just getting the points that you need and then letting the timer run. So sometimes you might even see uh, Elite just stand around for like 10 seconds or 15 seconds at the end of the round because he's already won. And there's no way he can go any faster. Yeah. But with this, his goal is to aim you know, as, as best he can so that the AI don't block his shots. And a lot of it is RNG and luck, but a lot of it is there's a lot of skill involved with this, these levels in particular uh, with how fast you can get them. So if you, get, if you get a good mix of really like well played match and good RNG, you can get some really, really fast rounds on Crash Ball. Exactly, yeah, because a lot of times. The AI might play really incredibly, but a lot of times you can, you know, fine tune and really practice how you like will, you know, throw the balls at them because like I always practice like different angles because a lot of times if an AI is at the very top of their like if Kong is at the very bottom, so towards me more, I can aim towards the top of his goal and a lot of times he won't recover in time to get to there, especially in like the first one, this one and Beach Ball, which is in warp two, which we'll get to when we get there, but um, the, the farther you get along, you know, Warp 2, Warp 3, Warp 4, um, it gets really difficult to, like, fine-tune your shots without the AI blocking them, but you just kind of have to fight through that, and there are strategies for each level, but it gets kind of progressively harder the way it goes. I would say generic strategies for, for the Crash, or for Crash Ball, at least, would just be the... They hit the balls here as soon as they spawn. Whenever you get a chance to, you know, like if you see, if you have like, if you notice it's spawning because the green arrow, uh, we'll show you that a ball is coming. Sometimes you'll try to hit that ball as soon as it hits on the ground. And that way, you, you give it a boost of speed right away. Like that small little optimizations that uh, do make a big difference if you do it enough times. Exactly. And one thing with this game is a lot. We, we mentioned RNG a lot because technically, for people that oh, that was a nice kill. Um, for people that like to task games, you'll notice that um, for someone that's really good at tasking in the community, a Craigle Bagel, he discovered that any input you do, and especially like the ballistic stages, um, like whether you you know hit left or right on the D-pad, or if you taunt, which is you do triangle, I didn't really showcase that, I will in beach ball, um, but if you taunt, if you move left or right, if you kick, you know, if you hold L1 or R1, which makes you speed up faster, anything you do will affect what the AI does, but with us being humans, we can't detect or make it go in our favor because it is RNG, but sometimes if you're getting kind of unlucky, you know, if the AI are playing really good, you might try to, you know, do something to manipulate it. Like, 
for example, one of the things that I like to do is if I notice that an AI is in the path in the in the path that I want to hit the ball, I'll, I'll taunt right before I shoot just to see if I can get him to, to move out of the way. You know, it, it's it's all luck, and there's no way I'm I'm not actually doing any real manipulation there. But I'm hoping that you know maybe he steps out of the way for me because I taunted or something. You know, you never know what the game's gonna do for you. Exactly. In my in my mind, it's like, oh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna this is big brain, but it's really just me hoping I get a little bit lucky. <laughs> but in, in a lot of ways, though, it, it is important that you do that. You know, it's important that you try to mix in those little things there just to to try to give yourself an edge over the RNG, which there's quite a bit of. Exactly. And for this being the first pogo stage there is. Um, one thing to note is it looks very easy like you're probably looking at my score and wondering well geez this is crazy you just got 32 points and you're already in the hundreds like they are not even keeping up again with it being warp one it's very much just teaching you that the game is so easy so when you get to later warp rooms you will fail horribly you got to be prepared you got to just try as hard as you can Especially if you're using Tiny, because one thing to mention about Pogo stages that isn't really known by newcomers is Rilla Roo, the monkey character, player 4, bottom right of the screen right now. Actually, I, I hope this was done accidentally, but it, he's actually programmed to jump a frame faster than any other character. Everyone moves the same speed except Rilla Roo, and actually moves faster as well with shoes, so it's an unfair advantage if you're not using that character. The only downside is if you're using Rillaroo, um, he is very not reliable in polar push stages as well as the polar, or not the polar, the uh, crate crush stages, the ones where we throw boxes we'll get to after this one. Um, so he's really only reliable truly in the pogo levels, but when you're facing him, it's kind of a nightmare sometimes, especially when you get to like any kind of relic because when you get to all trophies and 200% which is the entire game don't know why it's not 100% but 200% it is uh, the AI will literally fire their missiles the moment they're in your sights and they go for any item they see as soon as it spawns in so it's very difficult to win and very RNG dependent And uh, yeah, especially in 200% when you're on the platinum relics for these, you gotta win three times in a row. You gotta get a lot of good luck to win three times in a row on these kind of levels sometimes. Yeah, a lot of luck is needed and a lot of skill, because there are some manipulations you can do, because um, it's kind of hard to go in depth, but one thing you can do is if, if an AI has a rocket, you can kind of cross paths with them at a certain point to where they'll fire their rocket past you, and then that way they won't actually hit you, because you actually get stunned if they shoot you with the missile, and you get stunned for about, I think it's like two to three seconds, and that'll give them an upper hand to like go towards another box and kind of score more points on you. And on those higher difficulties, the AI, the AI will only shoot when you're crossing their path. They won't shoot at the other AI anymore, uh, just because, uh, I don't know, the, the devs were just feeling especially evil when they programmed the Platinum Relics. They just, they're horrible. Luckily, you don't have to do that in this, in this any percent, because uh, those definitely can, like, uh, they can take as, as much as an hour if you get especially bad luck, but it's pretty rare for that to happen. Usually, it, they, they take about 15 to 20 minutes if you get average luck, I would say. Unless you're elite and you just get it on your first try every now and then. Uh, sometimes. It, it really depends, because sometimes it's completely out of your hand, because another thing that happens is, it seems like spawn locations will favor the AI in these relic challenges as well where shoes might spawn you know a couple of tiles closer to them so you have no chance of getting them and with shoes you know you move a lot faster as you can see I am right now so you can cover a lot more spaces and because you're getting everything right away you're really at a disadvantage and you lose you usually lose a lot when it comes to that so you just got to be patient with it and if you're a newcomer trying to beat the whole game it's just a lot of practice a lot of patience you know it, it, frustration will definitely happen with this game, but I mean, if you want to play it just for fun, it's not too bad because there is other modes than adventure mode. But I mean, you just gotta keep practicing, and you'll get better at all the stages. Yeah, and one I thing to note as well, it's a, uh, it's like especially easy to, I mean, you'll probably fail this like when you first play it, but you may never, but once you get like uh, used to the, the mechanics of this game, you'll probably never fail this trophy ever again. Uh, it's pretty rare. I have almost failed it uh, recently, but <laughs> we don't talk about those because I didn't fail it. So, yeah. True. 
But anyways, uh, we're going into the gem here. We are doing the gem for this level because even though this one is not a determined time. It's just hit 80 points before the opponents hit 60 points. So it, sometimes you can get some pretty bad luck and they can score a lot of points really fast and you just get a fail right off the rip, rip here. And it looks like it's a, probably going to really happen because Rilla points. has gotten all of the shoe spawns to his favor. So uh, he's at five points already. So uh, this is not looking too good. This is a nightmare. <laughs> well, I guess he's got to hope now that the boxes don't spawn right next to Rilla because that is the type of luck he got in this trial year. So one thing... Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, I got lucky. All right. So one thing I was trying to do is keep the rockets so I could kind of oh focus my. on getting Rilla. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, so that was just oh, very unlucky. No. Lost, yeah, there's just lost no kind there. of about a minute there, but it kind of happens. That, that was especially unlucky. I will say that the your chances of failing is probably less than 10%, but sometimes you just... I've had times where I would get runs going, and then I lost to this like three times in a row you know, on the same day, so I just, you never know how, what the game's going to give you on this one. If, uh, if it just drops shoes on Rilla's head, good luck, because he's already got the frame advantage, but when he's doing... When he's got shoes, I, I think he's even going, like, two frames faster than other people who have shoes. If, is that right? Is that how that works? I think, like I think it's still a frame if you both have shoes, but if you okay. don't have shoes and he has shoes... I know I kept stats of this somewhere. I wonder if I... Let me see here. I don't know if I have it saved, but I know for a fact that... Okay, yes. I, I'll, I'll get to the stats in a second. Let me, uh... So we only do the gem there, we don't do the crystal, but to go back to the uh, the whole Rilla thing. So it takes you 17 frames as Rilla to do one hop, and it takes everyone else 18 frames. And then with shoes, it takes him 9 frames and everyone else 10 frames. So he basically, if he has shoes, he moves exactly twice as fast as you. But if you both have shoes, it's not quite twice as fast. But it's just an insane difference just by one frame that they... I mean, I hope not intentionally did for one character, but I, I don't know what the devs were intending, but again, it was their first game, so I think it might have just been a hiccup and an unfortunate one for the player that is, but... Yeah, unless, unless, of course, you're playing as the greatest character, Rilla. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then, then it's fortunate. <laughs> for those that know Crash Bash, I challenge you to try to do an any percent run with Rilla, and you'll soon realize why I do not use Rilla. Even though, and, and that's coming from a person who is definitely the best Rilla player in the world. It's not even close. Like, Elite has definitely shown that you can still get good times with that character, but he is, it's still a nightmare to use him. For sure. And one thing to mention about these uh, bash stages, as I refer them to, they're called cra sorry, crate crush levels. But basically, there's Wumpa that spawns in everywhere, and... It gives you one HP point per Wumpa, but for the AI, it gives them two. So it's very unfair already to the fact that they're basically gaining twice as much health as you when you get a Wumpa. So I'll try to eliminate that possibility by running over the Wumpa, but the only downside of that is whenever there's Wumpa that gets taken away, it spawns more from the sky at some point. So you kind of just want to make sure you're doing a lot of damage. As you can see, Kong decides to just kind of go for Wumpa there. Yeah, that's always, that's always like really bad luck. Overall, though, this one was looking really nice. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a pretty solid trophy. Yeah, any, any rounds that are less than 30 seconds is pretty solid overall. And we will be doing the Gem and Crystal for Jungle Bash. Yeah, that'll be a trend that you'll see throughout every single warp because these four like mini game types, the Crash Ball, Polar Panic, which is just like a polar level, uh, Polar Levels, and at the Bash Levels, there's gonna be four of those in all four of the warps that we're gonna see today throughout the run. So you're gonna see these levels a lot. So with the Bash Levels, you will be seeing pretty much for every single one. I think we'll be doing, you know, Trophy Gen Crystal. And that's true for the, the polar levels as well, because they're just much faster. Uh, especially if you're good at the game, you can and you don't fail, you're gonna get like these 30 second rounds or less usually. Uh, whereas if you tried to do a gem in crash ball, for example, it takes about two minutes. So there's, it's a, even though crash ball gem is a much more beginner friendly type of gem to do, 
if you if you want to go faster, you do these levels that are much more RNG and much harder to play if you want to get fast times. Exactly. Yeah, and one thing I don't know if I mentioned or not, but with the crystals, it's not a time limit or anything like that. One thing that you don't ever see, because it doesn't tell you in the game, but there's actually a health increase for the AI, and it's kind of hard to notice when you're first playing the game. But that's one thing to note, is it's like, I call it a hidden buff, because they don't. the game doesn't specifically say, hey, we increased the health of the AI, or... Statistically speaking, I say that because it's easier to kind of comprehend, but it's actually damage resistance. So it's the AI taking less damage per, you know, crate or anything like that. But the gimmick there, that usually crystals are gimmicks. So in that case, you know, you saw the nitros coming from the, uh, the back of there and kind of homing in on me wherever I was at. So that was the gimmick of that level. And going back to Polar Panic, the gimmick of that level was uh, the satellite was doing, you know, white electric shocks that if I were to touch it, I would get fried and then the AI would all target me and kill me. Three, two, yeah, that's like the cool thing about the crystals and I actually think that that was a great design. Was just have some weird gimmick to like change the way you play the, the game essentially. It's like, oh well, you play it this way when you when you would play in the trophy and then you'll just, you're just going to be targeting AI with boxes. But in that one, you have to actively be dodging, essentially, essentially the environment as it targets you as well. Which just adds like a little bit of flair to how you play it, uh, certain levels. And I think it's, I think it was actually a pretty good idea. I don't think it's always executed very well, as you'll see in certain levels uh, later on. But uh, I think they did a pretty good job with that. Idea. It works out pretty well, and it's, it's it, I think it plays out in like a very fun way. Hope you didn't blink, by the way. That was Papu, if you didn't catch. Basically, the the, the stages of Papu are kind of simple. He kind of slams down at the ground and spawns kind of like a, a shockwave of, you see the ground kind of, the tiles are spinning and you kind of take damage from those. And then little crash minions kind of appear and you have to go through all the crash minions and then uh, Papu will laugh and then you're able to hit him with a crate two times, three times, excuse me. Yeah, maybe he just didn't eat a big enough breakfast. I'm not really sure. <laughs> All right, but we, we're in warp two, so now it gets a lot harder. Starting with again, I go polar levels first, just because a lot of times in runs it causes the most issues. Yeah, every runner would definitely do polar levels first, as they just there's so much variance and so many things can go wrong so fast. It's, it, a lot of the time, it has like a snowball type of effect. So you'll fail once, and then you'll just start doing it over and over again because you get super frustrated with uh, a certain RNG that you may have gotten, or just the way you play. You, know, you, you never know what it could be. But... And right here, I, I'm gonna take the lightning power up. Usually, on Polar Panic, if there's a lightning power up, it's the AI are not that good, so you usually just want to, you know, hit the AI while you have it and just get rid of it. But in this case, Tilt Panic is actually kind of difficult. It's a big step up in difficulty, so you'll kind of play it safe while you can. But you'll see that with Tilt Panic is when I kind of first start doing a counter, what I call counter pushing, where the AI will push. Okay, I, just, I was making sure I play that safe because the AI kind of moves sporadically. So right here, you'll see. Like, so Rilla, it's hard to tell, but Rilla pushed, and then I timed my push right after that. So Rilla used his charge, and I was able to kind of force his weight off the edge, and he wasn't able to recover. Very hard to do as a beginner, but once you get used to it, it makes it a lot easier to do these levels, and you really can only counter push with Tiny and Kong. Yeah, it's it's really not as effective with other characters. There are there are things that you can do, but it's like extremely effective with the, with the two big boy characters. Yeah, I would say that the counter pushing is definitely one of the, the more difficult things for beginners to get used to. Um, I didn't even know it was a thing for a very long time. <laughs> I can't remember who told me. I think it might have been you or or, uh, or Eggy, but. I did not know about counter pushing for for a while after I started running this game. I think it was like a fir the first month, and then uh, somebody said that it was a thing. And I practiced it for about uh, about one day. Yeah, I think it was, I think I was it was like, me man. because I was in the same boat. My first ever run of this game was two hours and forty minutes because the polar levels gave me a lot of issues. And this is one of the harder crystals for polars in the game. There is one that's harder than this, but this one is really really. It's, 
I mean, depending on the kind of luck you get, it's the ice is constantly tilting and moving, and it doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal, but it actually throws off your... Mm, that was unlucky. It throws off your momentum a lot, so you have no power compared to the AI who aren't affected by this that much, and they have a lot of power. So that's where counter-pushing really makes it really easy to... Uh, oh, man, I'm getting really unlucky with Kong there. He's getting some good pushes on yeah. me, but... You have to utilize these counter pushes, and if you're new to the game, you normally would rely on getting the uh, satellite power-ups. I would say for a beginner, that would be the strategy, was just get the satellite power-ups. But if you're really good at counter pushing, you can actually counter push uh, Rilla off, which seems impossible, but because he's just so heavy. Okay, well, counter <laughs> literally, Kong just did it for you. But yeah, that's that's <laughs> another thing is. When you, when you start developing new strategies, like right there, I saw Kong was targeting Rilla, so I kind of waited because I, I could go over there and start pushing, but because Kong was going after Rilla, I assumed that he was going to try to take care of him for me, which he did, and because Kong pushed Rilla, his stamina went all the way down, so that gave me a free chance to push because you have to have an, a certain amount of charge in your you know, bar at the top before you can push, and so if an AI doesn't have any charge when you push them, they can't fight back. Like, you, you basically almost win all the time depending on how far away you are from the edge and, you know, if they're a, a stronger character or a weaker character, they might fall off right away, like Kong did. Yeah, yeah that, that is a, that's a great strategy, and it's especially useful against uh, Rio or, or Cortex because they their stamina bar is completely used up when they push, so that's one of the biggest benefits, I would say, to having Rio and Cortex over the Bandicoots. Is, is that stamina bar because the bandicoots only use half the stamina bar stamina bar per uh, push whereas Rio uses the entire thing so there's a lot more chances to to finish Rio off exactly and that's why that's another reason why you choose tiny over kong because it, it makes the polar level slightly easier some people would say that it makes the tank levels harder because Brio's shot is really fast it doesn't do that much damage but it's really fast so it's hard to escape and you have to deal with Rilla in the pogo levels, which he moves the frame faster, that, that's kind of a disadvantage. But it's one of those things where if you can make one thing that usually causes a lot of issues easier, you'll take it. You know, you trade, you trade you know, one positive for two negatives, but those negatives don't outweigh the positive. At least for my skill. But if you're new, you would definitely use Kong because you'd have to warm up with the, you know, the second best character, especially when you get better AI to deal with. It's one of those. It's like a warm up thing. Once you get used to the game, is when you try to start using like better routes, better you know, characters, etc. So now we're in Beach Ball, and we haven't really said too much about it. A lot of people would say this is the the biggest resident sleeper type of level. Uh, you, a lot of people play this game, and when they get the beach ball, they just fall asleep. They can't, they can't like keep it together. Cause it's not, it doesn't seem like a whole lot's happening. The balls move extremely slow compared to crash ball, except when you uh, use that little magnet power up that you're gonna see elite using constantly. Because if you use, when you use that, they move very fast. So there's a lot of contrast in this level with the slow moving. Uh, but on top of that, the AI will often just hang on to the ball with that free magnet power up for quite a long time. And uh, yeah, that will make the level seem to pass by very slowly. But in my opinion, and I think it leads to this level is probably one of the more interesting ballistics levels because of uh, all the things that you can do to speed it up. Exactly, yeah. And, and another thing to mention is with every warp room, so for the first four, we introduced the ballistic stage, the polar stage, the pogo stage, and the crate stage. And so when you get to warp two, you see different a different variant of all four of those. So it's like basically adding something new, which in this case is the uh, the whole magnetize and being able to throw them really fast. And it actually adds a new type of level as well. So warp two actually adds the tank levels that, like I had mentioned. So we'll see Desert Fox at the end here. And then when we get to warp three, you know, it repeats again. So we'll see another set of crate stages, polar stages, pogo stages, ballistic stages, and another tank stage. But then we do get another type of level, which is actually a crash dash stage, which is like a racing game. And then, you know, Warp 4, you know, repeat the same thing again, except for instead of a Crash Dash stage, we actually get a Medieval Mayhem stage, which you only see one at any percent, but it's a hit and miss. It's a really weird mini game where you just pop balloons. It's, I don't know where they got the idea from, but it's very interesting in a Crash game, to say the least. Yeah, I would say that's true for pretty much all the Medieval levels, except they're just kind of 
not very well thought out. They're they're very, they're very slow paced. I mean, some people may really enjoy them, but they're all pretty much all auto scrollers, and they're all like very simple. You know, like it's like oh mallet mash, you just you hit a you hit a mushroom that grows out of the ground, stuff like that. It's just it's not like there's not really a whole lot you can do to like be better at it, um, other than just. Smart, make smart, make smart decisions. Such. Yeah, because medieval, which, medieval mini games are kind of a lot of like the, th the objective you're trying to do, whether it's like in popping balloons or you know hitting the mushrooms with the mallet. It's kind of just you know being like it's like uh, what am I thinking of? Like being on top of your toes, you know, on on your heels, etc. Like anything, just to be really quick. Like know where spawns are at, just know where stuff's gonna spawn at. Like having a good reaction time for anything. Like you might not think with a pogo stage, like having a good reaction time is gonna help. But when you get to warp three and four with the pogo levels, you'll realize that if a box spawns in and you, you know, are kind of delayed to going to it, you know, you might think, oh, if an AI gets ten points, that's not that much. But you realize that ten points for an AI is ten points you don't get. And especially if you have a lot of tiles, like if you're losing by ten points and an AI gets five points, you know, it's like one of those things where like you you might have twenty tiles lit up, but if an AI gets three points, you just lost out on twenty points. Plus the AI just got three points back on you, so it's like a double whammy in that case. Yeah, that is that's actually a really good point for the for the. Yeah, warp, warp three and four is when I would say the uh, the pogo stages start to get really intense because warp two for the trophy. The trophies are usually where it's pretty pretty safe, pretty easy. But then the gems, as you saw in warp one, the gems are kind of somewhat random, somewhat like just not really time based, but score based. And we are entering All Pogo right. Gogo, -Go, which I would say it's my favorite Pogo level, only because you take out some sort of RNG in the form that, instead of boxes, you just have to make four-sided shapes. So as you can see here, I just made a 4x4 four four square, using because the zones on the outside, you can see there's like a kind of a square where you see yellow, red, blue, and green. Those actually count as borders, so you can use those as like one side of your shape. So the strategy is actually, as you can see here, one easy strategy might be just to make little two by two boxes and get lots of four point, you know, tiles. It's a nice beginner way to get a lot of points, especially to get shoes. Yeah, it's basically impossible to lose in the trophy if, if you do that. It can happen if you get bad enough luck, but it, it's this. Uh, if you play smart in the trophy, you'll, you'll never lose. It's, it's probably one of the easier you know, trophies in the game, but it is a. Uh, like Elite said, it's actually one of the more enjoyable Pogo levels because you can go for some pretty cool high scores. Yeah, and like he had mentioned earlier, like sometimes in runs, like if I've been, you know, resetting a lot, and um, because with with going for world records and stuff, you know, it's not like I can afford like more than like five fails. So a lot of times I don't really see the later levels. So I'll I'll go for high scores, but sometimes I'll just kind of take it easy and like I don't even have to score anymore if I don't want to. But for the sake of everything, I'm gonna do it. You know, getting high scores is always enjoyable, whether it's a pinball machine or you know anything. I always find getting high scores is fun. Yeah, you definitely do prove that with some of your your Pogo Go Go scores I've seen. I remember you did a whole stream one time when you just played as Rilla on this level just to see how high you can get. <laughs> yep. If, you, if you're lucky and get enough good luck your way, you can get over 400 points in this level. Dang, yeah, I've, I've never seen that number. I can play that right now. And another thing to add for this level is, if you notice the rockets, whenever they're shot, they actually go in a four-way direction. It's all, you know, north, south, east, west, as well as they add a new type of power-up, which is, uh, or an item, I suppose, which is the shockwave, which it goes only what direction you're traveling at, but it's basically, it goes the entire distance, like that, what really just did, immediately. So if you're in the, the whether the row or the column that they're aiming at when they use it, you, you can't escape it. A rocket, you know, it has to travel to where you're at, like right there, he sh Kong just shot that at me, but I was able to get out of the way pretty easily. Yeah, I think that this level, at least, uh, you know, the way it was intended to be played on the original PlayStation 1, uh, has a lot of issues just with the lag and such. I 
I used to play on a large PlayStation 2 when I used to do my experience. Um, and it turns out that that is not an optimal level for this game because there's a lot of levels that the game just... Uh, or the old PS2s just could not handle how much stuff was on the screen at one time. So with those missiles especially, I used to have my own strategy just to... To collect all the missiles and still win, <laughs> because that was the uh, that was, it reduced lag essentially. It was, it was one of those small things, and I was the only person doing this uh, because because I was I was beat dumb enough to not own a, a good PS2 apparently. <laughs> Yeah, one thing to mention with this game is the optimal hardware is you want uh, an NTSCU PS2, so like the American version, and you want a slim as well as you want like a 70 or 90k because uh, with PS2 is you have um, the F, we call it abbreviated FDS, which stands for fast disk speed, so it actually speeds up the, uh, the loads of the PS1 discs, and so that allows for a lot of faster loads, and a lot of this game is, you know, optimizing anything you can, and so saving, you know, the few seconds on each load really makes a huge difference especially if you're really optimizing the game on like a ps3 like for example that doesn't have any sort of speed up to it so um like you'll see a big difference like overall if you were to compare loads for like every type of system you can play this on yeah that that is actually one of the things that uh, at least if you're a beginner runner you might you might uh play this game on later of some sort uh, which is going to have the old, like, slow loads, essentially. And sometimes they're especially bad, depending on what time you might be using. So, um, it is definitely, you can lose as much as, I think, five plus minutes, or probably even more. I don't actually know how much time you're using, but it is, it is quite significant over every single level that you will be doing. But luckily, Elite is cool, and he has a really nice PS2, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Alright, this is actually a weird round, because the AI are actually doing better than I've seen them do in a while. Usually you don't very often see two separate AI getting over 100, you know, 140, 152 points right there. Um, it does happen, I have seen over 200, you know, I would, I would say for this level, don't get in the habit of like stop playing when you get to like 100 and some points because a lot of times that's when the AI like to just say, well, you know, if you don't want to try, then we're going to make you pay for it. That is so true. I swear, the, the times that I start, I, I don't pay attention in those is when I get punished. Now, this is one of the most underrated as far as difficulty pogo gems in the game. Now, if we're talking any percent, you only do normally two gems, which is the first one, pogo painter gem, and then this gem. If we're talking about all four pogo paint, or not pogo painter, but all four pogo levels, for those gems, then it's a different story because you have more points to score, less time, etc. So, for this one, it's really underrated in difficulty. Yeah, and I just want to say for a second there, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to how well Elite was dodging, like, the Brio was trying to shoot him with a missile for like 20 seconds of the game, and was right he kept on like perfectly walking just outside of his range, and then you know, it, it was it was pretty insane actually, <laughs> it was very impressive uh, manipulation there. Yeah, and one that was actually a really good gem. Yeah, and one thing to note there is uh, for those that would have been paying attention, Rilla was at 15 points for a long time because the AI actually only have to score 90 points. And uh, you're 150. Exactly. That's that's a big difference, a 60 point difference. And considering the AI are capable of scoring 150 points, you know, they can sometimes just absolutely outscore you and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just one of those things where you just have to like accept your fate and say, you know, the game just didn't want me to win that round and you just got to try it next time, you know? Yep. All right, now we're getting into Space Dash, which if you were a kid and you played this game, this was probably your favorite level. I can actually tell you for a fact that I, I, whenever I would play this game, I didn't own a memory card when I was a kid, so I was one of those kids. But I would always play just to get to this level, and then I would only play this level. <laughs> yeah, this, this level, casually, is really unique because the gimmick in this is, as you can already tell, TNTs and Nitros actually create holes in the ground, which make it for a really interesting arena. And it's actually really unique and actually fun. But in a speed run, it's actually pretty brutal. As far as like, sometimes you get very unlucky with like the AI, because again, with it being in warp two, you know the AI start targeting you a little more. 
right there, for example, right, you see like they were really targeting me a lot more than they would have been the first war group. It's just one of those things where it just kind of ramps up in difficulty, and if you're not careful, you can find yourself slipping into a hole. Yeah, I, the game can sometimes do things just as cruel as you might jump and then the laser will respond to your feet. Like, that is not outside the border of possibility that that's happening. Yeah, because one thing with this minigame as well is there's only a certain amount of crates in general that can spawn on the map at once, so once you use one, then another one will appear at some point. Um, but if no one's picking up crates, then, like, they're all fixed. And you can see here, like... Like, I just used that TNT, so, like, if I didn't kill Rilla there, another one would spawn in, which another one might spawn in in the background. But it doesn't look like it. It might have spawned off-screen, but that's kind of how it works. There's a set amount of things that can be on the screen at one time, so to get another one, you have to use one. Yeah, that'll that'll become even more apparent in the crystal coming up here uh, pretty soon, because you're gonna... You won't be able to pick up boxes in that one, so you'll have to kick them, but oftentimes you'll find it that the, the TNTs don't spawn in the right spot, so you'll just kick them and such, uh, just, just to get them out of the way, and that way you're hoping that more spawn closer to the AI, which is a, a strategy that is very weird to me, in all honesty, just because of like, the, way it, the way it looks. It just looks like you're doing nothing or wasting time, but you are definitely still trying. You're trying to speed it up, however you can. <laughs> Kong is... Oh, he's running away from me. He is very scared for some reason. I might actually lose this. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is actually... Uh, okay, there we go. We're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Sometimes the AI are very unpredictable. Like, right there, I, I kind of expected Kong to just pick up crates and throw them at me when it was just me and him, but as you saw, he kind of ran around the entire arena, the whole bottom and right half, and just kind of wasted as much time as possible trying to make me lose, but... Unfortunately for him, I had just enough time. I swear the AI get fixated on something across the entire stage and they just have to go get it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, it happens all the time. Alright, this is the best one. If you, if you didn't play uh, this all the time when you were a kid, you didn't play this game the right way. You're gonna see a lot of uh, holes in the ground unless you delete uh, things in like five seconds. But half the stage might be gone before this is over. <laughs> I have enough health, so I just need to reel it up. I love it. <laughs> Bria just jumps on a night <laughs> He's like, see ya. Uh, that's my favorite stuff in this game. Oh, that was, oh, well, that that was works extremely terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, it's very terrifying with this level, especially if it, if an AI gets put into like a very small area where there's like holes surrounding them, they'll just stay there and you can't pick up any TNT, so you have to somehow find a way to get over there and you know kick a TNT at them and kill them. It's always scary jumping over the the gaps. You never know if the AI is just gonna randomly decide to approach you right there and then melee you before you land on the ground. <laughs> I've lost a couple rounds like that. <laughs> All right, so here we actually have the newest level that we just discovered, which is you know the part of the tank levels and the whole gimmick of it as well. We're in tanks and going back to picking the right character. Uh, Tiny actually does the most damage as well as Kong and Brio and Rilla do the least amount of damage as well as Cortex and you know Crash and Coco and uh, Dingo Dial but the only difference is Rilla can shoot two shots and they travel pretty quickly and Brio's is one really fast shot and then Kong being the counterpart of Tiny we have the same exact shot so it does a lot of damage and yeah. in the trophy um, the health is actually, it's one of those things again where their health is pretty low, so it's a really big, like, placebo effect. So when you get to the gem and crystal, you'll notice that you no longer can three-shot an AI because they actually have a lot more damage reduction and just gets worse and worse the farther you get along. Three, two, yeah. And one other small thing that you may see here and there is uh, he'll be shooting uh, shots against a wall that he's right next to to damage himself. Uh, and the reason for that is because self-damaged shots are, are the, they do the least amount of damage, even less than uh, all the other character shots that we already said were the weakest, right? So like, it's, it's very advantageous, especially if you're low on health, to, uh, to shoot yourself with a shot 
but also can speed things up where instead of waiting for the AI to shoot you, you can just shoot yourself already, so then you use the eye, the iframes to uh, hit the AI sooner, basically. Yeah, and for, the, and for like those that don't know, uh, iframes is just short for invincibility frames, for those that don't know. But yes, um, a lot of times I will, uh, if I know I'm going to get hit, I'll shoot myself just because you only have a set amount of health. You, you actually take a lot more damage in the gems and crystals, so you actually have to be a lot more careful. And as you can see here, like, Brio normally would have been dead in the trophy, as well as Kong, but because it's the gem and soon the crystal, it takes a lot more to actually finish the job, so... And one thing that you're seeing here is it's kind of random, but Rilla seems to be running away, and I'm not really getting anywhere. It's... Okay, I should be safe. Yeah. That mine. Just okay. Hit, it went through. It went through the wall or something because it didn't hit him. Yeah, that's one thing. And this is so you can actually place a mine slightly off. Like it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle of a row. You can place it off to the side a little bit, and if it's at least 50%, like into the the columns it actually will still go through and it just makes it look like the explosion part of it is actually going through the wall but it's really just kind of sticking on the very outskirts of it and that's what you just saw happen with Rilla is it went on the absolute outskirts of the wall so since Rilla it's, it's kind of hard to explain but like right there for example like my cart was kind of touching it but the hitbox of the actual explosion isn't the entire bar it's yeah, kind of it's yeah. more just like a like a narrow line almost. <laughs> exactly, yep. And the gimmick in this level, other than like I mentioned earlier, the health being a lot different, like the AI having a lot of reduc reduction for their health, so it takes a lot more to hit them. Is you have this submarine shooting bombs at you, and you can use it to your advantage as I just did there with Kong, but it only will fire at you, so you kinda have to strategize how you will do that. And right now I'm kind of in a bad situation because I don't have that much health and yeah, this might be kind of hard to survive. I can't even... So now I'm in a situation where I can't even hit myself. Yeah, this is scary. Basically, you gotta keep Real... distance. Yeah, oh, that was... Okay, we'll take those. <laughs> oh, he come right into that mine. That's so funny. <laughs> and you can see, like, I don't even have a health bar. Really. You, you have to kind of squint your eyes to see a little sliver of green in there. You'll find yourself at that health a lot of times in tank levels. It's just a very... You get used to having no health, basically. <laughs> it's a All very right, so... difficult level to get good at, and a lot of times you kind of just have to be good at, you know, making second, you know, decisions on the fly. Yeah. Alright, so this is the second warp boss. And, uh, what, what do you have to say about him? Well, it's pretty straightforward boss fight, although... Every phase gets worse and worse. As you see, he shoots a bomb and destroys part of the platform. And one thing you can notice, if I go to the edge here, it lets you recover. But the part that he breaks off, it's an insta-kill. If you, if you touch that at all, you automatically lose and have to redo the entire thing again. All three phases. Hint, there's three phases in this. Alright, so we got past the yeah. first two. This last phase is pretty difficult because one thing that people don't realize is with your push, the bears can actually push you pretty far. And if you push into a bear on the edge and they push back, you will actually get completely pushed off the edge and don't have a chance to recover. Yeah, because if you if you use your push, you use up all your stamina. And I and I think if you have a uh, no stamina, I don't know. I don't really understand how like what knocks you off immediately. But sometimes like when you have like any backwards force and no stamina, it seems like you just fall off immediately. It's kind of it's kind of the same principle as counter pushing an AI where you're essentially getting counter pushed by the robotic dogs there so you just immediately don't get a chance to recover and the strategy there is if you let them push you directly off the edge i don't know if you noticed that in the third round but you actually can't be just pushed off by them the game will actually let you be pushed way out of bounds and you just have to mash square and you actually will like do four different recovers to come back it's very weird it only works on bearminator but it's very weird. Yeah, some, you might actually see it here on Melt Planet too, uh, in, in some rare cases where, uh, as you'll see, Uka, the floating mask, is melting the ice around the corner of the stage. And if you get knocked off and then he, like, melts the spot that you're knocked off on, you'll have to recover multiple times. It's pretty rare to see it, admittedly, but it does happen here sometimes. Yeah, but Melt Panic is definitely, at least a trophy, this is where you'll start, uh, 
having even more, uh, like, a much higher chance to fail in life. There's just a lot of things to keep track of, because you never really want to be under the gaze of Uka as he's passing by. Why wow, that was a really good counter push on real one, but um yeah, because one thing to note is Uka only gives out negative effects. One thing up, so one thing to mention about um like if I go back to Polar Panic, the items you can get from the satellite are the lightning, which is you know good it zaps everybody. You can get the weight, which after ten seconds will crush whoever has it and they're out. You can also get shrunken, which is bad, and you can become giant, which you might think that's really good, but in this game. If you're big, it more than likely doesn't help you because the AI just don't care. They just decide that just because you're big doesn't mean you're stronger. But when they get big, oh, you, you have no chance. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You have to just run, run away pretty much. Except um, except maybe on Polar Panic Trophy because all the AI are so weak even even when they're big. But, um, alright, so this gem, uh, and the crystal coming up are notoriously difficult. Hope you didn't blink. Unless you're really good at counting. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a really good gem. I got fortunate it. there. So, Rilla went straight for me. He went kind of towards the bottom left. And so, I did a precise counter push, which made it to where he couldn't recover. And then, I got fortunate enough that Uka had frozen Kong. Brio had used his charge to get Kong. And then, I just pushed that Brio, who had no stamina, and just was an insta-kill. Yeah, that's pretty much the perfect RNG. You, you just want all of that to happen every round if possible. Especially on the gem and the crystal. Yeah, this See, crystal is by far one of the hardest polar crystals there is. Yeah, I would say it's one of the hardest challenges in the game, period. Especially for a casual. Oh, that was very weird. Okay. Whoa! Oh my gosh, did he melt that ice? Yeah, he, he melted the ice right underneath me and it just had a very weird visual effect, but... The gimmick yeah. here, aside from the AI being really difficult to push off, is the fact that, I don't know if you noticed, but you have no chance to recover. If you touch the edge, it's an insta-kill, just like that one bear meter scenario I was talking about. Yeah, it is, a, it is a nightmare. This level can be extremely punishing, especially because the AI are so heavy. Like, it, it's just really, really brutal sometimes, but... You yeah, can see Elite cleans up that crystal really nicely. That was a really good, uh, yeah, good bounce back, I think, from that fail. Luckily, the fail repeated itself in that win because Uka actually took the ice out from underneath Rilla's feet, which actually caused him to just instantly fail, just like I had done. Yeah, you probably would have had to uh, kind of push him another time if that hadn't happened, essentially. Yep. Alright, so now for Embolism. This is the third Ballistics minigame, because we are in Warp 3, but it's when the difficulty really ramps up because one thing you'll notice here is uh, engine and how there's a lot of pinballs going around. I think it's a maximum of I think it's eight or ten on screen at once. Only when engine is available though. Otherwise, I think the maximum is five. Yeah. And there's also the uh, force field power. -up. Realistically, I think the maximum is close to 10, but sometimes with the AI, like in the Platinum Relics, are playing especially awful. There can, it just feels like the engine just keeps on spawning balls forever, and the balls never go in, and they just, and you know, there's just a crazy amount of balls sometimes. Yeah, you, you, engine, there is a maximum set, because if for some reason you're able to, um, like in the Platinum Relics, when it gets really difficult, if you and all the AI are just juggling all of the balls that are on the screen, you actually will see engine not fire any. Like, there, I think there, I don't know if it's 8 or 10, I can't remember, but there is a set amount where he will not fire I, yeah. anymore. I've never actually noticed that. It's very rare to see because a lot of times they'll, you'll, either you, like most of the time if there's like five, six, seven balls you know, at you at one time, you can't stop all seven of them. You'll stop maybe most of them. Just like kind of Brio here, you know, I'm sending all of these at him, but he's not going to stop all of them all the time. Alright, that's pretty, pretty easy round one. Let's go. Yeah, that was a pretty good round one. One of the things that you're going to see Elite doing with the, uh, obviously you want to get the power up sometime, or, or whenever you can. Um, but you'll see that Elite will sometimes allow the corner AIs to get it because if they're, you want to try to keep the match as even as possible for the AI. Like, you don't want one AI to die immediately and then have the other guy still have like 15. Uh, because it's just going to be a little bit slower. It's a lot more fast paced um, if there's three goals for balls to go into versus just two. 
So yeah. you might see Elite not get the power up sometimes because uh, of an un uh, like an unbalanced game. And a lot of times then, I won't get the power up just because of the fact that the AI are just right on top of it at all times. Yeah. There is like a strategy that I like to employ. It's the, I, I don't know if it's like the strategy it is, but I like to call it the Cubby strategy. Go Cubbies is a Crash Bass streamer as well, and he will say left and right uh, whenever he power up spawn. So if you just saw right there with Kong a little bit ago, he picked up the power up and it was on the right you know it was on Elite's right hand side. So the next power up that spawns on Elite side will be on the left hand side. And it, it always switches back and forth, but it's hard to tell if it's gonna spawn on the Elite side or up towards Rio. So that that sort of uh, there there is some more stuff to this, but essentially the basics is it's gonna spawn on the left side next. Where the villa is uh, instead of the cons, so that way you can get that way you know where the power is. Yeah, it's a very weird, like predictable RNG pattern in a way because it's half predictable, half RNG. And the the way to describe it is so, like he had mentioned, if a power up spawns on the bottom right, so it's fi it's 50 50 whether it spawns up top, like on the upper two levels or on the bottom two levels. But what isn't random is if it spawns right or left. So if it spawns on the bottom right, that means the next time that the power-up decides to go on the bottom of the screen, it'll be on the left. But sometimes it spawns on the top like eight times in a row. And so every time it goes up top, it'll keep alternating left, right, left, right, left, right. Like you won't ever see it go right twice. Um, occasionally, a power-up will spawn in the same time that engine will spawn in. And so you'll see a power-up like kind of flash for like a frame. And that actually counts as it spawning in. So then if you see it flash for like a a quick second, then that means it already gets spawned in, so you have to know that it's going to be on the next, like, the other side of the screen. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of the times I won't go for power-ups unless I'm feeling like I'm in danger, or if it's, like, me and Brio in a 1v1, because one thing that, um, you develop as you play this game a lot more is when you have the power up a lot of times it requires you to not have as good of control with where you're actually aiming the pinballs at um, as well as sometimes the AI can just simply hit a ball at your you know force field and it goes right past you and you're kind of wondering like well why do I have this power up if it's just gonna go through me um, so I mean I'm just getting it right now just because it's really helping out a lot but now that it's just Kong and Rilla I'm probably not gonna grab it because I don't really need at this point since it's basically already over. Yeah, it, like, really, I think the best way to think about it is uh, for a beginner, the power-up is everything on this level because as you can see, there is a lot of balls on screen and it is hard to keep track of. But as you get better, uh, it's really, uh, you want to grab it more just so the AI don't have it <laughs> sometimes. Like exactly. at the end of the level, you would rather Kong or Rilla doesn't have it if they're the only AI left because it's harder to score on them. Exactly. And now we're going to El Pogo Loco. So this is the first Pogo level, in my opinion, where you actually have to really pay attention to be really good at having good reaction times because the AI almost always will go for whatever item they're next to. So a lot of times it comes down to RNG, like as well as they'll fire missiles almost immediately. It's not absolutely immediately when they see you. Like if they just pick up a missile, there's still a slight like break when they can fire it but it's very close to relic difficulty, which is insane that this is a trophy round. Yeah, I think it actually is like, uh, I can't remember who said this, but it's, it's about the same as the gold relic difficulty. Like one, you know, like one less than the gold relic. So it, it is very difficult. Uh, especially, like, I, I can definitely uh, say that because when I was trying to go for my first sub two hour run of this game, I can tell you, I think I lost this trophy. I threw like 15 runs to this trophy. So many runs to just getting destroyed by uh, by Rilla most of the time. Yeah, and one thing to note about this is the gimmick, as you can already see, is Ripper Roo is actually in this game temporarily, where he's actually just hopping around. And he'll randomly decide to just place TNT in your way, and as well as sometimes he'll place a four-way directional arrow, which will paint, as you can tell, like the four directions that the arrow is on your color. Um, or whoever steps on it. And the cool thing about El Pogo Loco as well is there's three purple boxes that spawn in, so there's a, bit, a better chance that you'll get points. But it also keeps the gimmick of Pogo Gogo, where if you make 
any sort of parallelogram, a, you know, a four-sided shape, square, rectangle. Um, it'll actually fill in the empty spaces in the middle with your color. It doesn't give you the points right away, but it at least fills in the space with your color, so you actually get more points out of it, especially if you're making bigger shapes. But it is kind of risky to go for as a new player because you want to get boxes more than just focusing on shapes because, you know, any wasted box is more for the AI to score. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point, is that, especially as a beginner, I think it's great to just, you, if you see a box, just go get it, usually. Uh, you'd, rather, you'd rather have those points than not, as we were saying earlier with the other levels, it's like every point that you don't get is sort of like, uh, double like that, because the AI will get it. Um, but, in this, uh, you're gonna see Elite going for a lot of shapes whenever it uh, doesn't really have, like, anything, like, on his side of the stage. Uh, you'll see that he might, whenever possible, he's gonna try to like kind of own a quarter to half of the stage to himself, and just just to make shapes, and that way when he does score, it's a big point total. Yeah, another thing that you'll see me do a lot that's kind of weird looking is, um, I call it like sometimes it almost looks like I'm shooting a rocket backwards or like in a column that I'm not standing in. It's because if you do, it's not frame perfect at all, but it's not you don't have too much room for error. But if you're traveling from left to right, so how many points am I at? I could probably... Okay, so like if I go from left to right, I'll, I can shoot a missile in the column that right now while moving, like you see there. Like I was already basically in the left column at that point, but I still shot the missile behind me. And it's a nice tactic to use, and it takes a lot of practice to get used to it. But you can you can kind of like if you're traveling left with an AI, and they might get to a box first, you can kind of use that tactic to make sure that you know like if if you're gonna lose to that race, you can make sure you can still shoot them and then get an extra hand on it. It's kind of hard to master, but it's not something that's absolutely necessary to um, to like win. But I would say sometimes it gets you out of really bad situations where you need a box to win versus lose, and the AI is gonna beat you to it. Yeah, I would say that that is uh, a strategy that I don't use very often. I'm I'm not nearly as good at the pogo levels as we did with certain with certain small strategies like that. And that's the, that's going to be really the difference for a lot of, like, winning some rounds or, uh, or losing them. So I might lose a round uh, where Elite could have, uh, you know, clutched it out with a nice missile, something like that. And another thing to note as well is that to get better at these pose stages, a good tip that I would recommend is just knowing, like, knowing what's going to happen. Like, if you, if you see that an AI is, like, two tiles ahead of you going for a box, you know, you, you would know then not to go for that box. Like, even if you don't have a missile, you don't want to just go for a box that you know someone's going to get. Or like these shoes. Like I know Kong's going to get these shoes, right? Or immediately know not to hold up and go that direction because then I'm just kind of wasting space and following. And Rillaroo actually, I didn't even realize he is just absolutely killing oh it right gosh. now. Wow. And I still won. Unbelievable. And that's the thing with Rilla's frame advantage. All it takes is a pair of shoes, and he's immediately two times faster than you. It takes him nine frames to step on a square versus your 18, and it really makes it for a hard time. But thankfully, we only do the trophy in any percent, so we're out of there. That was terrifying. Losing a pogo round edge, you guys can already tell, is, is not good. It, it's a huge time loss. Uh, but fortunately, Elite Three, two, uh, was very clutch there. That was, that was actually really scary. I think we're losing by almost 40 points. That was really impressive. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say anything because I was a little worried, but as soon as I got the pair of shoes and really got hit by the TMTI, I definitely gained a lot of confidence from that. That's true, that did help a lot. Alright, Snow Bash. This is a this is an interesting level. Uh, I, th I think uh, at least a, for a casual, this level is much hated. Uh, I think it's kind of cool for uh, for runs, but it is really hard, just like space bashes. I think all the bash levels are pretty hard, honestly, um, to speed run. But yeah, th these levels, because the, with it being ice physics, you kind of slide all over the oh. place, and as well as like I keep mentioning over and over again, AI have a lot of reduced health, so you'll notice that it takes a lot longer to kill them each and every warp room, and like. For example, there's times where you'll you'll see that me and like Brio, for example, will get hit by the exact same crate at the exact same time, but I will take more damage than him. So it's very unfair in that kind of case, which is why they're able to survive a lot more hits than I am, and 
you know, a lot of times, you know, you get kind of unlucky. Set of RNG where Rilla kind of followed me there and did nothing but kick me and it's, it's kind of very unlucky. Sometimes it's just a non-winnable situation. You just got to take the take the loss and just kind of get a better second round. Yeah. One of the biggest strategies you're going to see on this level in particular is um, Elite's going to be jumping a lot. Uh, because when you're on the ground and you're just walking on the ice, it takes quite a while to uh, to speed up because of the ice physics in this game. But when you're in the air, you will hit max speed very quickly. So you'll see he's going to be jumping a lot, especially after the boxes, which was true in the other levels too, but it's especially useful in Snow Bash. Uh, just for getting to boxes faster, avoiding the penguin, all kinds of stuff. And one thing to note as well is, when you one thing I never mentioned is when you kick an AI, it's actually, they, their, their AI actually blinks as if they have invincibility frames, but when you kick an AI, you do like you do only one damage, and you actually can hit them with a crate again, even though they're, you know, in invincibility frames, um, which is a, it's a nice but weird mechanic, and the penguin, whenever he hits you, he does a lot of damage. I think it's similar to a TNT, but it's counted as a melee, so what you can do a lot is if the penguin hits an AI, if you wait until they're about to move, you can actually throw a crate immediately at them and kind of get, I mean, I call it a combo, like a penguin combo, which is very nice to do a lot of damage a lot quicker than you normally would be able to. Yeah, yeah, the penguin combo is... Like right there, I just did that. If you noticed, penguin hit Rilla and then I TNT'd him, which his health went from about 60% to zero, just like that. Yeah, the, uh, the penguin is something that... Um... I think, it is, at least for speedrunners, you want to be activating it uh, most of the time, even though it's a lot of luck, because you never really know if it's going to actually hit them or not. It that The potential to have an insanely fast round because of the penguin damage is, is more important than having like a more like controlled environment. So you might see, like uh, at, least with, uh, at least with my runs, I, I swear I fail the stage all the time. I'm just like, trying to go too fast, and the, I, take, I just take a ton of damage. Yeah, like, this so gem is definitely a balancing act. That is very unlucky. I got an, a bad item spawned on top of my head. So this is probably going to be a loss because I can't really do much in this state. Though I, one thing I'm looking forward to win is if I get a wait. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to, to out damage Kong. Yeah, and once again, we're, this is the problem with having... Um, call it the, 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 the AI buffs, the secret buffs that Elite was talking about on the gem here and the crystal. It just It's going to take so many more crates and TNTs to, to finish off the AI versus you. It just seems like you have no health on these on these levels sometimes. You'll, you'll get hit by like one AI or one TNT and one penguin and you're basically done. Uh, you're going to take like one more box hit and you're out. Yeah, Whereas the AI might take like seven boxes or something or eight boxes. <laughs> it's, it's quite a, quite a few hits. Yeah, it's actually quite insane how much HP like they can take versus you. Yeah, it's, it's extremely unfair and just uh, it's annoying to play against to say the least. Yeah, this game is kind of, you, you kind of think it was made to be unfair, but it's, it's one of those things where you just kind of wonder, did, did the devs really want you to beat this game very easily? I definitely think that they were trying to, like, take an approach where, um, it's kind of like, uh, what do you call it, like the old high score games where all you, you couldn't finish the game, it was just go for a high score, like, uh, like Donkey Kong and such. Uh, you know, they wanted to make it so it was just really hard, or maybe, maybe more like a Ghost and Goblin style type of game, you know, it's like, oh, like, we're just gonna make it really hard instead of, like, you know, trying to balance it or anything. <laughs> That's honestly what it feels like for a lot of the levels. Yeah, but for let's, real. Let's just make it really hard this time. You know, they'll get it eventually. I, the, AI, or the, the creators of this game definitely were not playing to have full speed on it, and, and you know, here we are. Yeah, I feel like a lot of games made, I feel like a lot of games in general, not even just made like in the, you know, in 2000 or before, I feel like it's just games in general weren't really made to be speed ran. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. This, this game is... Whoa. <laughs> that was very close. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> that was the, he, he had the worst RNG you, you can get there. Like, Rella was just homing RNG. And the thing is, is that he, like, perfectly will move to any direction that you hit. So you basically just want to hold a straight line and hope he 
he doesn't get you. Yeah, that's basically what I did. I just held up and waited till the timer ran out, which it's, I believe it's still 10 seconds in the, in the, uh, Crate Crush levels, but I know it's for sure 10 seconds in Polar Stages. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I actually don't know how long it is in the Crate Crush either. I just, I know the Polar one because, uh, well, specifically Manic is a, a level that you need to know that kind of info on. <laughs> right. Yeah, you'll find that out later on, uh, as the... Uh, Really, just the last warp, uh, bash, and polar level, uh, they're just very unfair because of how little time you have. Uh, so it's really important to know every single little statistic in this game to, to give yourself any type of edge in winning those. Exactly. Right, see the, this is the second tank level, we haven't really talked about it too much yet. But, uh, Metal Fox, uh, is kind of a cool stage, actually. It has, like... There's a lot of different transformations that you'll see that are on a set pattern, so you'll, you'll notice that you'll see like a lot of the same transformations early on here. Because Elite may finish rounds before you ever get to see them all. <laughs> but uh, there is one other new item as well. Uh, talk about that one. Yep, so there's bombs in this level, which they do a quite a lot of damage, and they're really useful because, you know, they do about the same amount of damage, if not the exact same, as the, uh, the mines do. And so, there are splash damage, unfortunately, so if, as you saw round one, if you, if you were to go back and look, I actually waited until Brio shot me, until I had my invincibility frames, and then I shot the bomb at him, because otherwise we both would have taken that damage, and because it's a tank stage, and because the game is progressively harder, I would actually take more damage than Brio, and that would leave me like one shot to Kong and two shots to Rilla. So it'd be, I'd almost be dead at that point if I had splash damage. Yeah. Yeah, getting hit with a mine or a bomb is basically game over time um, in Metal Fox. It's just, it really is just brutal. But once again, that's that's one of the biggest reasons to pick either Tiny or Kong for uh, as your character. I think tank levels are especially difficult with the other characters once you get later on because your your shot just does so little. At least Tiny and Kongs maintain some damage. It, um, like yep. buff, you know, there, there is something to it that makes it nice. Even though you will notice it's gonna take him on the crystal and the gem here, it's, it might, I don't actually know how many shots it takes. It's like five or six. I think it's I think it's uh, five versus four, and I just got very lucky there. Cause one thing that can happen, and it's kind of weird, but if there's a mine placed on the ground, if an item is placed on top of a mine, which in this in this particular tank stage, items just spawn. They don't drop from the sky or anything. They just spawn. And if an item spawns on a mine, the mine will instantly detonate. And same goes for if you or an AI lay a mine on top of another mine, it'll just instantly detonate the one underneath it and start your mine fresh. And so, coming to this crystal, if you're wondering well, why does that matter, well, in this crystal, any mine damage you take, whether it's falling from the sky, which in this particular crystal, they actually, anytime you stop moving, a mine has a chance to fall from the sky on where your position is at and it insta kills you. Any mine damage will insta kill you in this game in this crystal. That's the gimmick of it, which is ridiculous considering the, the HP the AI have is in just, it's insane. It's completely unnecessary how difficult this is. Yeah, this one, this is a really brutal one. Much like, you'll see with a lot of the more three stuff. Um, like right, like right there, if you just noticed, a mine just fell from the sky because I took damage, as well as it, two mines fell from the sky when I took damage because two different times of taking damage, but that's actually some of the better RNG you'll ever see in that level because uh, I, I kind of made that look way too simple than it actually is because sometimes for a newcomer you get stuck on that level for you know an hour like honestly or you just give up simply. Yeah that is that is definitely a very difficult crystal. There is, there is a lot of strategies that we didn't really talk about, like small things that Elite was doing to try to like, you know, basically, especially in the crystal, you want to try to position yourself so you don't get boxed in. Because as soon as you get boxed in and they're just like all pushing into you, it's pretty much lights out. Like there's really no, like, you can, you can shoot yourself a bunch of times, but you're eventually just going to get hit by one of the fallen mines from the sky. So like, it, it really is pretty brutal. Um, sometimes where they'll just, they'll just box you in and like there are there are once again there are strategies to try to get them away from you but anyways we're moving on to the first new dash level 
um, which is uh, probably like one of the better levels in my opinion. I really like the dash levels. Yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty fun. And uh, one unique thing that was actually found via TAS, I believe, a couple years ago. It could have been it might have been found out last year, but um, you can actually get uh, lap skips in this and. A newly discovered task this year, uh, if you're in two players, you can literally just align player one and player two in certain positions and frames where you can literally do all ten laps in like two seconds or less. It's crazy. But for uh, for one player, it was actually discovered that um, you can actually push up against the wall in an AI at a certain frame in a certain way to where the game registers you doing two laps that reads your position twice. And as well as if, uh, if you're going across the finish line and you hit an AI on top of you, you actually might, go, your cart might go back a frame, like at the right time. So it, again, it pushes you behind the finish line after it already counted your lap, so it counts two laps. And those are all task lap skips, but I actually went out of my way and learned one of the skips, which is at the beginning here. And it's, it's very, it's frame dependent, it's frame perfect almost, and it relies on what Brio does as well. But... I just, there you go, so right there, if you turn on the right frame at the right time, you can go immediately to 9, and it saves 3 to 4 seconds, and it's actually a funny little way to save time, and it's actually, I mean, it, it's obviously, you know, you want to do that, and it's one of those things where it doesn't really hurt you to go for it, especially if you learn the timings of it, and it's, it's pretty cool, because then you get some pretty quick laps, and then people are left wondering, like, how the heck did that so fast? Yeah, I mean... Elite really is the uh, expert on these levels. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody else is quite as consistent in those lap skips, uh, except for Craig, of course, who's passing. Yeah, o only only the task can really do better, as far as I'm aware, because no one really goes for lap skips. But this is one of the only free ones. Like when you get to the later ones, like the in Warp Four and Toxic Dash, you can actually drive off the edge, and you can actually cross the finish line a frame after you go off. Or a fr sorry, a frame before you go off. So basically, you'll go off the edge of frame after the finish line, and then you'll spawn a frame before the finish line. So essentially, you, you go down two laps. Yeah, I can't get over the fact that you basically said that uh, nobody's better than you except for the past. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I, I think that's pretty funny. It's true, but it's, it's so funny <laughs> that they absolutely know humble. <laughs> I mean, it, fun fact though, uh, I do have a fast. Uh, Space Bash Crystal Win, which is faster than any TAS has done it to this date. Just saying. Three seconds. That was... And it was in his uh, former world record. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, and I've actually gotten two different sets of three second Crystal Win. So I've done it twice faster than a TAS. Not not to brag or anything, but you know. Not that I, yeah, at least, <laughs> at least probably a TAS actually. He's not real. <laughs> Yeah, all the fails so far have just been RNG manipulation. That that's totally it. Yeah, it's all to be faster, guys. All right, and in the dash level, once we, in in these dash levels, we will be going for everything except uh, later on in the next warp, uh, because there's like a new uh, reroute in the warp or, or in the in, for the fastest. Uh, what am I to say? Like the the, fa the, the fastest, fastest route, route, it saves some time to actually do. Uh, drain bash it's a crate level to do that crystal instead of the dash level because um, toxic dash is pretty difficult the way it is and that crystal is really unfair which technically all of warp 4 is pretty unfair but yeah technically all of it is you know I, it, I'm actually one of the few people that, that kind of likes toxic dash uh, but you know it is what it is. You'll, you'll get, you guys will get to see it when we get there but uh, this crystal right here, this is actually a lot scarier than, than it may seem uh, because the missiles, the gimmick in this level is the missiles will instantly cause you to fail if you get hit. Uh, and luckily you can't hit yourself, but every time an AI has a missile and just starts shooting it, sometimes the AI will grab a missile and just do crazy stuff like turn around and look at you. And uh, yeah, luckily that didn't happen here, and Elite uh, managed to get through it. But I've had a lot, I've had some runs actually fa uh, fail to this, and it, it's pretty scary sometimes. Yeah, it's pretty tricky. But one thing is, if you carry a, a rocket on top of your head at all times, then only only two can be on the field at one time. So then that eliminates one of the two rockets that can spawn in. All right, the Komodo Bros boss. 
This level, or this boss is kind of cool. It has two phases uh, worth talking about here, which is this kind of like tower fighting section stage. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's unique for sure. It's like three phases and it's like phase 1A, 1B, 1C. There's like three parts of phase one. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very unique. And one thing to note is if you fail at all, in phase one you have to do the whole thing over again and the worst part is when you first load up the game you get the three two one countdown and then the things start shooting at you but when you retry if you fail they shoot at you before you're even allowed to move so it actually is harder to do phase one if you die yeah but oh but you, oh, elite you just died uh, but you may notice that he's already in phase two because uh normally you'd have to wait for them to kind of come up from the ground there and if they're and because it's the first time you're playing it anyways they, they uh the boss is really hard it's basically almost impossible to beat them it's not it's not impossible but it's very difficult um and it's actually slower to try to fight them at the beginning because they have so much help uh so that's sort of one of the weird things about this game is every time you lose to a boss they become a little bit easier the next time and I think that was the devs finally relenting and being like, okay, we can't do, we can't get, we can't make this too hard. Um, but yeah, this is, that's actually one of the reasons that Elite uh, decided to, uh, want to mine himself again afterwards, because he wanted to get to the, the third time that you fight them, because that's the first, that's like the, that's like the fastest way to beat them, I think. I don't actually know if it's faster if you go for second phase on them, but... Yeah, unless unless you get perfect double rockets on phase on like the first death Komodo, it's actually fastest to go for two. And if you're new to the game, you always want to go for you want to die three times. But make sure that the Komodos are actually, um, like I would say, don't go for any fast strats right away. Like make sure they're both the Komodos are out of their um little like platform deal thing before you actually do anything. Alright, and this is Manic Panic, so this is uh, actually a really cool uh, polar level. I think it's probably one of the better balanced ones, finally, because of the, uh, the new mechanic. The bomb is really favorable for the player, actually. Uh, normally, if you get it, uh, you can just you can guarantee a kill on the uh, guy pretty, pretty easily. Which is, uh, which is really nice, because it's they're, they're so heavy now, especially in the gem and the crystal, that it's really nice to know that you can get a guarantee finish. The one thing to note, really though, is the bomb can spawn on top of you, and unfortunately it can also spawn on top of the AI, so Kong had the bomb there, and for some reason he decided not to use it at all. And so right now, this is the type of round where you'll notice... I'm just going to play it safe. Normally... I would wait for the bomb and just bomb Rilla, but um, I didn't want to wait. Oh, yeah, that's, that's embarrassing. Uh, you didn't see anything? This is the safe way. Tiny <laughs> see, that was, I think that was actually a misplay, Elite. You shouldn't have shot him with the bomb because it gets rid of the bomb. And sometimes True. they can dodge your hit. <laughs> well, actually, when I when you stun them, they actually can't move for a second, so that's the only reason why. That's yeah. true, that's true. Uh oh, uh oh, I just got very lucky. Scaring me, Elite. So thankfully, Brio shot, or not shot, Brio pushed Rilla off for me. Alright, now we're coming to what I would consider in this run the hardest gem, if not, well, definitely the hardest polar gem, if not the hardest gem in this game for any percent. Yeah, this, this gem is brutal. The AI are so heavy, you cannot counter push them off. You have to use an item, like, you cannot counter push. The only one you can counter push off is Brio if you're right on the edge. Otherwise, you can't push anyone else off. And they actually can, you're basically a feather compared to them being a brick wall. So you need bombs to kill the AI. Oh no. It's very, uh, very RNG reliant. Like you'll notice right there. Uh, look at the timer, I mean, just look at that timer, man. And we first tried it. Holy crap, let's go. Oh my gosh, dude. That's always that's that's how you know you're on a great run. When you get here and you first try the gem. That was really cool. Yeah, the crystal is actually fun in my opinion too. It, it's a lot less stressful. 
but at the same time for a newcomer it might be really stressful because if you've noticed when you when you throw a bomb at someone um you might not notice because i kind of you know combo the ai but i'm on foot right now so you notice i uh yeah i can't really do much and so whenever you get bombed you actually go on foot and so basically i'm at a big disadvantage but what i have to do is just win while being on foot yeah, basically the next time he gets bombed, so basically if he gets bombed one time, then he, he just, he's gone. And if he gets pushed off the stage, uh, he can't recover. So he's at a, quite a big disadvantage. But then one nice thing about being on your feet is you're pretty fast, actually. You're very mobile. And there's a good reason for that. It's because of a, a strange mechanic uh, that is really effective while on your feet called neutral push, which we really haven't talked about yet. Uh, because it's not like very effective with Tiny and Kong. Uh, but it is it sometimes has its uses. And uh, you'll see that every time he pushes, he, he goes really fast and really far. And that's because he's letting go of the control stick for a second there, right before he pushes. And it uh, it gives him like a big boost of speed for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why that works the way it does, but yeah, yeah, it's very if, very useful in the crystal here. Yeah, if you push without holding an input down, whether you're like I play personally on D-pad only, but a lot of people will play on uh, analog. And so if you push without holding an input down while on foot, you actually go a lot farther. And if you want to, you can take two characters like Tiny and Kong and put them right next to each other, one on a polar bear, one without, and you can neutral push with both of them, and you can or push with both of them, and one of them will be in neutral, and you can see you go actually way farther. It's, I don't know why it works that way, but it just does. Yeah. It's very useful. <laughs> it, luckily, it does work that way. Alright, so this level is the best, dude. It's got the best music in the game. It's very difficult, Some people. but it's, it definitely <laughs> has kind of a weird but banger soundtrack to it. Yeah, I think uh, this, this is a, there's definitely a strange uh, soundtrack. It's, I don't really know what the developers were thinking when they decided to make it, but it doesn't sound like a song from a Crash game, I can tell you that much. I, I really do like this song, actually, but it's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and one, one mechanic about this minigame is, well, it's called Pogo Padlock, so you can obviously already guess there's padlocks in this game, which lock your colors in place so no one can um, step on them and steal them. And you actually can't step on your own colors, or else you lose all of your colors, so the padlock protects you from that as well. Um, and you can also steal others' colors by shooting them with the rockets, which I would say is more important than the shoes, but that's very debatable, just because... It, you can score a lot more points if you, you know, steal other people's colors. And I mean, with the shoes, you can travel a lot of spaces, but, like, if someone has 10 spaces and you shoot them and then get a box, that's a lot quicker than finding shoes and how we just traded there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good trade, though. Favorable. Yeah, yeah. I, I shot a frame after Brio, so I, he basically took my color for a frame and I took it right back. So... In, in that situation, if we were farther away and I knew he was going to shoot me, you want to make sure that you shoot second because then you'll get their color. It, it's kind of hard to know that in the moment, but um, normally you don't want them to shoot you so you wouldn't really get that situation anyway, but you know, in case you get that situation. I am so bad at timing that, honestly. I always uh, shoot so little bit before they <laughs> Yeah, the uh, little locket thing is kind of interesting of a power-up. I'm not really sure what the idea was for that one, other than just they wanted to try to find something interesting and new. They did name the entire level off of it, though, didn't they? Isn't that, isn't that the point? Pogo Padla? Yep. <laughs> I don't really get why they named the entire level after, because it's not like... It really isn't that great of a power-up. Uh, it's, it's, it really depends on the moment. Sometimes I feel like it's only the most useful if you have like a lot of tiles painted. Like if you if you don't have 20 spaces or more on the ground, then the padlock isn't really that useful in my opinion. Yeah, it, it's really it's, it's very situational. Honestly, yeah, I mean like I mean like if, if you can grab it, I mean you might as well because like if if the AI have it, then you can't you know you know you can't call it where they're at, and it, it kind of makes it annoying. But um, you know otherwise I would say just grab it and then just immediately go for like shoes or a rocket because for the most part unless you have a lot of tiles already that you're trying to protect it's not really viable to go for power box all the time 
Yeah, and you'll notice that the AI, um, they especially will go for padlocks. No matter what it feels like, if they're close to a padlock, they will they'll chase it down. Which I think is kind of favorable for the player usually, just because, like I said, it's not the most amazing power-ups. Shoes are still very good, and missiles are especially good, as Luke said. So there are just there are superior power-ups to it uh, that already exist in the level. Yeah, and one and so yeah, and like like Logic had mentioned, the cool thing about this stage that kind of makes it it can be easier than El Pogo Loco, which is weird. But the AI will normally target the padlock first, unless they're closer to like a box. But another thing is they actually won't intentionally step on their own color. So like sometimes there might be a box that's like completely in the middle of their zone and most people will be like, oh I can't get that box, they're right there. But what they don't realize is the AI won't purposely step on their color, so you might actually be able to get that box. Yeah, I, I actually think that this level is definitely... Well, I think that like uh, once you learn how to play uh, Pogo Padlock really well and like kind of choose where you decide to move so you don't like box yourself in constantly. Uh, this level is definitely a lot easier than, uh, yeah, than, um, Pogo Loco, because Pogo Loco is, there is just a lot of RNG. Definitely. Hoping that really doesn't get shoes dropped on his head, basically. That was a really nice song. <laughs> just sorry. Yeah, I, I, sometimes you'll see me standing still because a lot of times if I have a lot of colors, I don't want to, like, trap myself, so I want to wait for a box to spawn, and then I know where I'm going, because otherwise you might like go up and then all of a sudden you're trapping yourself where you have to step on your own colors and then a box spawns below you and you're like well I kind of wasted that it's just like little things that you might not think of right away when you're playing the game but yeah and I noticed that you decided not to go to everybody's favorite level yet Skyballs. Three. Yeah. I forgot about that. Whoa. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm used to doing speed runs where you want to get this level out of the way because this is not necessarily. Well, I guess it is a run code. The gem is pretty brutal, but it's more so for speed. Skyballs would be yeah. after this, and normally I do polars first, and then all crate stages second because when you speed run this game, normally you do the levels that you know cause the most resets or um that you're maybe less comfortable with first. So I always go like polars, crates, and then I'll go like pogo stages and then the ballistic stages, but it really depends. Um, so yeah, in this case, I just kind of did this level now because I was kind of in the mindset of, um, you know, playing it like I would a speed run. I mean, it's kind of a speed run, but it's not world record grinding speed running. Right. All right, so this level is uh, kind of cool, actually, for the batch level. It has a great gimmick, which is the, the mystery box which has like power-ups uh, that do as much damage as the team I believe, right? Oh, yes. So they are uh, essential to get, but they're, like, they, I can get them, obviously, and they damage each other all the time. But as you'll see in the gem and in the harder versions of this, it's very important that you get a little bit lucky with which box you with the power of hidden in, because it's, it's one in four, essentially, you have to hit, sometimes you have to hit all four boxes to find that power. Yep. And the weird thing about this stage, and it's kind of glad that it, it works this way, but the the health in this game, in the gem, the A, I think it's the gem and the crystal, the AI actually have less damage reduction than in the trophy. So they're actually harder, or take they take more hits to kill in the uh, trophy than they do in the gem. But the reason why it's a good thing is because the gem, you only get 30 seconds, and it's pretty brutal if you don't get the items or TNT. You, if you get a lot of TNT, you honestly don't need any items, but it's, it's a pretty brutal gem. But I would say it's easier than Manic as long as you're not getting, like, if you're getting some sort of TNT or some sort of items, then it's a lot easier. Yeah, I, I would say that the, the Drain Bash gem is definitely one of the hardest gems in the game, but it's mostly due to luck. Uh, not because of like, uh, there, there's not really a whole lot you can do to influence it. Like, if you just don't get any TNT spawns and the power up just it keeps on getting like wasted by the, the AI. Yeah, that's pretty bad luck, but generally that's the type of luck you have to get to fail. So, like, you'll see, at least gonna be using boxes more effectively in this because of the, the double damage that he was talking about. Essentially, it's like you, you do twice as much damage for every single item. There we go. be useful here. Okay, here we go. What is this like? <laughs> that TNT was clutch. 
Yeah, I'm, a lot of times, so in that case, like, I feel like most people that are beginners of the game, they might only want to go for, like, the power-ups, but since everything does one more HP of damage, including TNTs, I would say if there's a TNT on the ground, always go for that first because um, with it being a 1 out of 4 chance for the crates, you're, you're guaranteed to do damage if you hit the AI with the TNT versus the purple crates, it's a 1 out of 4 chance. Yeah. Alright, so the gimmick here is you can't kick the crates anymore to open them, so you're going to see Elite picking these purple boxes up and throwing them. Uh, generally though, he's going to be going for TNTs once again, like he just said, because they're guaranteed damage where these purple boxes are far from guaranteed. And you're, as you're going to see here, the, uh, the AI are back to their old shenanigans with the, their health buffs and crazy in this one too. That was incredible. That was an incredible time. On Getting less than 30 seconds on that crystal is definitely a huge, huge uh, time save in, in a real run. This is That was impressive. And uh, one thing to note there as well is going back to kind of TNTs over items like I did have the item in my inventory But I still picked up that TNT because sometimes that uh, orb item won't go where you want it to go And that can really cause issues especially in the gem So that's why I chose to use the TNT because if I missed the TNT, you know, you know, that sucks But I still have the power up so I still would would have won that regardless, but that's why I figured to go for TNTs first yep. All right now we're on everybody's favorite level skyball Yay. Yeah, this uh, this ballistic stage is so as a child, right? Everyone has probably used those toys where you know you have three holes, you know, a square-shaped hole, a circle-shaped hole, and a triangle-shaped hole, and then you get you know like a triangle, a circle, and a square, and you know you triangle goes with triangle, square and square, and circle and circle. Well, in this level, you take a square arena and you try to make a circle out of it. So you try to put a square into a circle hole and it doesn't work right. Well, that's what the developers did. They made a circle arena when it should be square and it really makes it for very random angles that the AI can score on you on as well as a lot of times the balls will literally just go right through the carts and right through the walls and it's very, very annoying to say the least. Yeah, it, it is really frustrating to play this level as a casual because previously you had been learning how to play like on emblem and other stuff and you got used to kind of like how long it takes to uh, get, get in front of a ball and block it well he's pretty much throwing all that out the window with the new like shape of the stage it, it makes like the depth perception weirder yeah everything's just a little bit weirder so like balls you think you can save generally you're probably gonna be a little bit too slow if you're just barely there like that would have barely saved it in the previous level it is just really frustrating to play on this level for a lot of reasons. Like balls can go through the control posts on the side there like, very easily. Uh, they, they could do that on the other levels too, uh, but it's much rarer. Uh, on this side balls, it happens all the time. Yeah, not to mention the AI are at their absolute worst difficulty. Like, obviously the Platinum Relics are the worst, but like, for whatever reason, the Skyball, sometimes the AI play similar to like Gold to Platinum Relic difficulty, where they just don't let a single point in for a long time, and it, it sometimes makes you wonder if you're actually playing the trophy or if you somehow glitched the game and are playing the Relics already. Yeah, it, it is horrible because you can get a ton of time loss just to an AI deciding to play like a god. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but most well, of the time, it's not that much time loss. I mean, if you fail the round, then yes, it's like a couple minutes, but that's still not like the worst thing ever. It's If you fail multiple times, that's when it starts getting bad. But um, for super optimized runs, then you, you will care more about like if an AI is like not letting a point in for so long and like you might waste like 30 seconds or more just from an AI not cooperating correctly. These are definitely, this would definitely be a good time for like donations for this part of the game because there's really not a whole lot more to this level. Like, yeah, for the for this level, it's more. It, yeah, there's not much more to say about Skyballs other than it's a uh, it's the worst ballistic stage out of all of them and. Uh, it requires a lot of focus for sure, um, especially if for those that know the crystal, which it would make a really good donation incentive if to go really underestimate to you know attempt the crystal and try to beat it. But the crystal is it's literally the worst crystal in the entire game by far. 
Yeah, and that's that's in large part due to the extreme RNG factor and extreme difficulty, in, in my opinion as well. It's just very hard to react to the, that type of like difficulty. Do you want to explain what happens in that crystal? It's just it's horrible. Yeah. So basically. In this trophy, if you already know it, so everyone gets 20 points, including you. That was one of the best rounds I've ever seen. I don't know what happened there, but I'm um, sorry, not to go off topic. But um, in that the in the crystal, insane. everyone gets 10 points, which is nice. If it was 20 points each, it would be, uh, yeah, I would not. Let's not even bring that up. Anyway, the gimmick is that the AI at any point, I now no one has access to the original code of the game, so I don't know statistically what the like percentages but there's a certain percentage we could just say 25% or 50% I'll say 25% but there's a there's a certain chance like 25% let's say that whenever an AI uses their extra kick ability that whatever balls they hit with their extra kick turns red and any red ball cannot be kicked by the player but can be kicked by the AI and that red ball if it touches your cart, it you, you insta fail. You go from whatever points, 10, 9, 8, 7, whatever you're at, all the way to zero, and it's an insta fail. But the AI have no impact to that. And on top of it, if it goes in their goal, it counts as zero points. But again, if it goes in your goal, it also counts as zero points. So it, it does no points if it goes in your goal, but if it hits your cart, you lose automatically. And the RNG fact is, you know, you don't know when an AI is going to turn a ball red. And if there's three balls that they hit at the exact same time with their extra kick, all three of them can literally turn red the exact same time. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. A lot of it's guessing because you don't know what's going to happen. This, the stage is already very random with how the you know the balls are bouncing and sometimes going through the walls and you know if it's a red ball and you know sometimes it might hit the propeller at such an angle that it literally travels perfectly linear to your goal where you can't escape it and it's an automatic fail just because the game gave you a bad bounce and you can't get out of the way. Yes, that is that is the worst. I, I have not played that crystal nearly as many times as you have, really, but. It, it is a nightmare playing that crystal sometimes. Yeah. You can just be completely stuck on it if you're doing the 200% category for this game. Yeah, the last time I did the crystal, it took me seven attempts, and the first three attempts, all I had less than five points on the AI to win, and I got either a ball that I couldn't avoid, or I just didn't react in time, and it hit me, and I died. But we're out of sky balls, no fails, let's go. All right, let's go. We're finally moving on. Oh, so, and it seems that we have a donation here from Man 69 Greetings from San Jose, first time watcher, last time donator. I hated this game as a kid. It's great seeing this being destroyed in half. Haha, -ha. anyway, put my money on Honey Pop 100% run. Yo, Man 69 thank you for the donation. Very much. Let's go. <laughs> But surprisingly, not going towards the sky balls crystal, unfortunately. But I guess you know that's whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to see it. They don't want to see it. That was holy moly! <laughs> that was a perfect round. I don't know how that happened, but that was really nice. That was clean. Three, two. Yeah, same goes for this stage. Like you know, you're gonna get sick of us saying it, but again, the whole they take. You know, I think it's about four shots in the trophy for like tinier Kong shot, and there's actually missiles that can come from the sky, um, as well as like mines. Which um, the one that had spawned at the top left was a mine, but basically, it's it doesn't take much to kill the AI. It takes only four shots, not including missiles. And then when you get the gem and the crystal, that's when it gets really really bad because it takes more to kill them and the gem, you know, time limit as well as the crystal, the crystal is one of the, I would say it's a fairly, fairly hard challenge because, uh, as you, I don't know if you want to explain the totem, otherwise I can, but um, we haven't seen it really yet because I've been winning too quickly, which uh, that's not even an honest brag, like, at about 105, if I don't win the round, that's when the statues kind of fall from the middle thing, if you want to explain how they kind of work, you're going to see just now. Yeah. So, after, I, can't, I actually don't know the timings very well, admittedly, but right around 25-ish uh, seconds in, the totem will jump off the top, 
uh, and it's going to start walking around and uh, slamming into the ground, and it does as much damage as the mine, I believe, uh, so it's very dangerous, so it's good to know where it jumps off and the timing. Obviously, I'm not a true bash runner, because I forgot what when it exactly jumps off. <laughs> I, I never get to see it jump off a lead, I'm too fast. <laughs> Basically, the first one will spawn in at about 105 or 25 seconds, but the only thing, the weird thing that can cause it to spawn in late is if, if someone is hugging up against the, the like middle you know, square statue part, it actually delays the timer a little bit, or like extends it, I should say. Um, so I don't believe I was really on top of it too long, so I don't think it'll delay it, but um, it should spawn at about 5 to 4 seconds remaining. But we won't, you won't even really see it until after I win here. So it's probably going to spawn in about three seconds. Yeah. Although Brio was up against the wall, so it's going to delay it about three seconds. So it should spawn about nah. Okay, I made. Never mind. <laughs> I, I didn't think I was that close to the wall, but usually it would spawn in. And it usually goes bottom left first, and then it'll kind of go upwards. And then the next one will go bottom left, and then it'll go left. Or sorry, it'll go bottom right, and then travel left. Yeah, and then they kind of travel like clockwise around the map, I think, for a while. Yep. I, I don't actually know how long it can go because... Oh, it, it, it keeps I've going. It, it, so. it can go until the timer hits zero, and it, it's still the same pattern, but it can be uh, manipulated by uh, the AI rubbing up against it because then it can... It basically, it'll like run in place if it's like, if an AI is kind of pressed up against it. Yeah. Alright, so with this crystal, uh, you'll notice it's kind of similar to... Uh, Desert Fox, way back in Warp 2, it's similar to that crystal, where you're going to have like uh, something in the center kind of tracking your movement, and, uh, shooting a, shooting something at you whenever it sees you. So Elite just got extremely unlucky there, I think I'm mindful on it. Yeah, a yeah, uh, supply drop randomly, because the supply drops are random, as you saw, one just randomly put uh, rockets at the top right, so it randomly chose the exact tile that I was on, and yeah, that, that was very unlucky, but it chose the tile I was on to lay a mine on me, so I instantly died. Also, not using Eggy Strat, I think that's the reason. Uh, there's no consistency with this game. A lot of it's RNG, and <laughs> there's no such thing as consistent RNG in this game. So there, there is this one strat that I, I will uh, attest to. If, if you can get the, a, a mine to come out on the first frame in this level, for whatever reason, it causes Rilla to uh, go into the corner instead of chasing after you right at the beginning. So Most of the time. It's like guaranteed to like give some space. Not guaranteed, because as Elite was saying, it's not guaranteed. But it's, it it's, has, like, it's, it's like, like, like it's like it works. It's like a... At least 50% of the time or more, it can cause Rilla to go to start the level off away from you to give you a little bit of space, but that doesn't stop the fact that he can just look at you and shoot you, and Brio can do the same thing. It's kind of hard to, you have to micromanage everyone's shots as well as the totem, and the strategy for that level is honestly to just stay near a wall, because shooting yourself is a lot less damage than any other form of damage in that. Anyways, Eggy, Dr. Eggy is a speedrunner also, uh, who has also achieved sub 2 hour in this game, one of the very few, and uh, he has developed some strategies in recent times. Uh, that, was one of, that was one of them. Elite doesn't like it apparently, so it didn't go for it. <laughs> it's, it's not very, there's no real strat that's viable for that crystal. I mean, whatever works for people, it's fine, you know, same with I do things that don't work for other people so it's kind of you just do whatever works for you because the game is already hard enough so any little thing that you do whether you take your time or any strats will work yeah, this all right this is toxic death we were talking about this so long ago back in the dash he's finally gotten here uh toxic dash is uh, the second variation of the dash levels and in my opinion probably the worst variation. Uh, well, just, worst variation like... for any percent by far. It, I mean, it's got toxic in the name for a reason because the AI are very toxic as well as there's a toxic monster that blocks everyone's vision. Well, the AI, it doesn't affect them, but you can't see where you're going if you're behind it. And he leaves little slime guys that if you run them over, you get sent up in the air and more than likely you'll fall off the edge. Like, I just hit two of them because I, I guess I'm just really wanting to give him a hug. This is really gaming in here. This is what you get to see if you watch the replay the scene every day. Some, some really great horses. 
No, uh, but the, uh, yeah, the, the guys, the little guys jumping around, they're pretty cute looking actually, uh, I like them, but they, they're really annoying because you just have to drive around them. Luckily, the, the AI have no idea how to drive around them, so you'll see them just driving off the edge all the time every time they pass by the little green guys, which is, kind of makes this level very easy, uh, it, like, to, to not lose. To get a fast time is a whole nother story, so yeah. it's not losing. It's pretty hard to lose sometimes. At least on the trophy. The gem and crystal is very easy to lose, but we're not doing the crystal because of the new the new route that I have chosen to do with tip from Benzagram, who is uh, he doesn't really speedrun this game anymore, but he was a one of the OG speedrunners. Yeah. Anybody who has uh who knows much about the speedrunning history of the scene knows knows Benzagram. He, he's done. He, I think he was the first person to get inside two hours, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Uh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think I think uh, Pi did it after him. Yes. And then Pull got uh, sub two after that, and then Pull ended up taking the uh, world record last year before I had taken it from him about, I think it was like a couple months after, I can't really remember the exact date, yeah. I think it was sometime in February of 21 that I got it. Yeah, it was like two or three months after. Uh, February. I, I think you got the record um, like sometime in the summer actually, because I didn't know about this game back in February 21. <laughs> I can tell you that much. I just I just remember it being close to my birthday. I'm pretty sure. I would I could check to make oh, well, sure. Paul got it around that time. Yeah, is that what you were saying? Sorry. No, I no I I think I got it around that time. Oh uh, no no no! Paul Paul got it like in March. I can I can guarantee it. Just because I, I did a little bit do, of research. Do we do we have a, do we have a stats person here? <laughs> uh, I actually am the stats person right now. I did look up some <laughs> stuff just so no. But uh, yeah, Paul Paul got the world record that I had had for. I had had the world record for quite some time. Uh, like, I actually don't know the length, but it was probably like a, a year or two, or probably like two years almost. And then, um, and then Cole finally got the record before Elite kind of stole it away from him very, very soon after. And uh, yeah, I mean, really very impressive run. We're, we're not going to be getting any records today uh, because the the RNG required for record now is it's pretty insane. Uh, Elite's had some really good runs, and he's also the only player to have ever achieved a 152 time in this game, and he's actually done it twice. Also, he just, did you just lap skip? I, I tried to lap skip, I did not quite get it. Oh, I was just about to say, what was that? <laughs> so he was trying to set up a, a lap skip on the edge there, just for the, you know, the showman that he is. He, he just knows way too much about these dash levels. Oh, shit. It, I just went into the crystal on accident. I again, my autopilot kicked in. <laughs> we will not be doing this. I'm sorry, you will not see this crystal. But basically, if you run off the edge at all, you get slime in your engine and you slow way down, and it makes it almost impossible to drive in that mini game. And the AI is still one of those things where if they fall off, nothing happens to them at all. Yep. Yeah, it is. It's a brutal crystal if you get knocked off. If you don't get knocked off, it's it's, it's just normal. Yeah, you're gonna get knocked off most of the time. Yeah, and the AI drive a little better in the crystal because there's no barrels that spawn in as well, so they actually drive pretty fairly. Like, it's if if you get knocked off a couple times, I mean, it's actually kind of scary. Yeah, you can lose. I, I've only been knocked off one time. I got knocked only once and I lost. It's just, sometimes it's really good. Yeah, for sure. But anyways, this is Ring Ding. This is the medieval level, the only one that will be in any percent. And as you can see, it's a really uh, like fun mini game where you, you know you do a lot of like cool things. Uh, like like the only cool thing that you do is nothing. It's not cool at all. This, this level's terrible. No, the, the, there there is one cool thing about this mini game, and the fact that uh, when you have a lot of points, let me just make sure it really doesn't score anything. Uh, the only mini game where you literally can uh, spin in place and kind of just mess around and. A lot of times I'll get to like 35 points and then you can just do that for the whole 30 seconds that you're not playing or 20 seconds, whatever it is. Like, like I honestly don't have to play anymore if I don't want to because there's no way they can get 30 points like without like vacuums and such. Because this is yeah. the entertainment that everyone wanted and came for is spinning and ringding. And yeah. you can add a little more, uh, a little more flair to it by jumping while spinning. 
whether you go left or right, because they have it. Tiny actually spins weird. He actually jumps and spins clockwise. So when you're spinning counterclockwise and you jump, you actually counteract the spin, and it looks very funny. I actually did not know that. I've never tried that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just in case you guys don't know what's going on here, the entire goal is to get your color balloon. Um, and yes, they do not tell you which color is yours. Uh, you just have to remember from like the pogo levels that you're yellow. You're always yellow if yeah. you're the first player. And, and I mean, at least it gives you kind of like a small spotlight under you that's yellow, but it, it, it doesn't tell you at all. Like there's no like color indication other than the little thing up below you. Exactly, yeah, it's it's not at all obvious, so if you're, if the first time you play this, you, you may be really confused, you'll be like, what's going on here? Especially if you if you beat this game over, like, you know, several days, you may forget, so you may forget what color you were. Uh, you know, it was, it was just a strange little thing. Uh, but not to mention, the, the black balloons are completely unexplained, uh, they have many different... Uh, potential outcomes so you can get a black balloon and it can turn all the other color all the other balloons your color it can pop all of the other balloons that are not your color that's one of the other effects it has um, and it can also change the spin of the stage as you see that's why the spin of the stage keeps on changing yep and another thing is it can also uh, I believe it can just pop every balloon as well like just get rid of all the balloons and I think that's when it changes directions is when it pops sometimes it'll do that because like sometimes you're because one thing with the character is it's been determined that some like the yellow balloons which are yours don't spawn in as frequent as the AI's balloons do which is you know you have to win a game where it doesn't really play fair but you see that round they actually all got 20 points which it's kind of insane for the AI but it's one of those things that just happens sometimes yeah yeah, and then there's the, mis the little mystery boxes that sometimes spawn in as Elite has been keeping them. They have the power-ups once again, just like you saw in Drain Bash. Uh, they either get shoes, which allow you to not be affected by the spin uh, of the stage at all. Um, and then there's also the, uh, the vacuum, which is a really, really useful power-up. As you can see, Elite is extremely lucky and gets the vacuum every time. Uh, just kidding. He's, he's basically only getting shoes. But if you get the vacuum, it's usually a guaranteed win. Um, especially if you pair it with the black balloon that turns it all your color. You saw, you may have noticed that Elite did that in one of the earlier rounds. So that's, that's one of the common strategies, is to just get a vacuum and uh, just kind of take the balloons all the way around. Sometimes you can get it where all the AI will follow you, and then they don't even, they don't even go for balloons, they'll just follow you with the vacuum. <laughs> And one thing to know about the shoe power up is, um, you're able to you're able to like if you stand still, you won't move on the conveyor, but you actually move slower going the correct direction, and you actually move faster the wrong direction. It's very weird how it works that way. You don't move the same speed going with the belt. If you notice, like, it's kind of hard because the AI when you get items, they get really upset that you're getting items, and they just immediately try to also, zap you. Pay, you should pay attention. Elite uh, uh, is going way too good. Oh no, I, I see that, yeah. That's why I'm kind of focused on black balloons at the moment, but we're good. Yeah. I saw he was at 20. I think I was at 22, and I, I was kind of like, I just got to make sure he doesn't get a vacuum. Yeah, pretty much. I will say, losing on Ring Ding can happen. It's very rare. Um, really at least for the trophy. Happen. I mean, on the yeah, gem and cri the crystal especially, but the gem is very... We don't do the gem, but basically in the u.s version the united states version of this game it's uh very coded incorrectly it basically pairs player one and two together and player three and four together as a team mini game and only basically your points will go down but brio's will not but you and brio so like if brio gets a balloon it counts for you and if uh really gets a balloon it counts for kong and it's basically like a 30 versus 25 team mini game for the gem right all right, so now we are on the final boss. This is Oxide. He, Nit Nitrous Oxide is the final boss in Crash Bash, and there's two phases once again, uh, kind of similar to the Komodo Bros, where there's two phases. Uh, the first one is the Oxide Ride. You're in this, like, cart, and he shoots missiles at you, and you have to dodge all the obstacles. It's uh, pretty intense, actually, unless you just know that the corners, he basically can't hit you. As you see, Elite didn't get hit unless he wanted to. He actually took that damage on purpose because you're going to see he's in a damage abuse or death abuse once again, uh, like we did in the Komodo Bros. So you're going to see he's going to take um, 
He's gonna take a couple deaths here. How, what what oxide are you gonna be going for, Elite? Uh, the most for speed running, you typically go for oxide two. But if you're wanting to play it safe, you would go for oxide five. So, and what we so what we mean by that is, the number is the amount of deaths. So oxide zero is if you try to you know defeat him without doing any intentional fails, um, which is near impossible. It's like it's super rare. Like it's been done, but like. In terms of doing it in a speedrun, it's never been... Well, it has been done once. I've Only once, or has it been twice? Uh, I think the, there's only one person I know that's actually done on Side Zero in a speedrun. I'm not sure how many times he's done it. Uh, but there is a, another runner who started up around the same time that I did named Sly Swooper. And uh, he... He proved to be the best Oxide player anybody that ever, you know, anybody that ever seen. He, he just was so good at Oxide 0 and 1, where basically any other top runner was going for Oxide 2 and usually struggling with that. It's very yeah. difficult when you don't have these, so... Yeah, Oxide is, that, Oxide is very, uh, very challenging because not only do you have to, you have to score on him just like Ballistics, and he takes 8 hits. But he shoots rockets at you at the same time, and if you notice, there was a red ball that spawned in, which it spawns in at a certain time, like after a certain amount of the regular balls either go into your goal or his goal, it spawns in. Um, but yeah, you, you can take damage from the rockets, which do more damage than letting a ball in. So you try to avoid the rockets more than anything, but um, Oxide as well takes 8 hits, and basically he's really hard to score on, even on Ox taking 2 death abuses, but he's fairly, I wouldn't say fair, but it's more doable when you at least have to use twice. This is getting really intense here at the end here. You guys are basically dead even. I think Oxide's down to one hit though. Yep, we ended up getting it and we got a sub two hour run, so that's an incredible run. Oh my gosh, yeah that, that is incredible. For a marathon, getting sub two hour is extremely impressive. Yeah, because the estimate for this game would be a 210 because typically you won't get a lot of good RNG to where you'll get sub 2. That's more for like, um, you know, resetting a lot, but a, a really good run in Crash Bash would be anything that's under 210. Even if you're at just like, you know, a 211 or 212, that doesn't mean it's a bad run. It's just like for, for like, if you take it to the next level, that's when you want to definitely be closer to like the 2 hour mark. Um, under 210 for sure would be a good start. Yeah. But anyways, that is the end of any percent. Uh, you're gonna see that we're gonna get to watch all the credits and everything, but that was that was basically it. I think uh, since you're in a good team, you're gonna see Aku Aku putting away the crystals there. He's hiding them from Uka. Uka's upset about that. Yeah, there actually is three different ending scenes for this game, which is there's the good, there's the evil, which, you know, if I was using Kwa Kong, you'd get the other side, which is Uka getting all the crystals and Aku, you know, saying, like, that bad has triumphed over good and all of that. And um, the third one is actually if you do a two-player run, which is a co-op run, which is, you know, it's you, you and another person, you know, locally playing against two other AI in adventure mode. And if one player is on the good team and one on the bad team, you actually get a bonus minigame, which makes up another percent. And you actually have to face off against each other. And whoever wins, if it's the good team that wins, so you get a basic cutscene where it's both Uka and Aku, and you know determining that you guys have to face off and determine who wins. And then if good wins, then you get another cutscene, which is you know the one I just got. Or if, if the bad wins, then you know other way around. But um, that's where you get the third cutscene. But you only see that in two-player. Yep. Yeah, but anyways, that is the run. You know, that's it. And I am going to showcase Skyball's Crystal, because again, it could be a really good um, incentive for donations to showcase if we do get under estimate just like we did now. So I am going to showcase Skyball's Crystal a little bit, and that would be a really good incentive to make for donations. Yeah, that's the reason that we put the estimate so high, it's because uh, we wanted to make sure that there was going to be extra time. Or made for something else at the end because uh, Elite is uh, he's pretty consistent at hitting these sub two hour times and making it as it is uh, you know not every time not every time admittedly you can get some terrible RNG but uh, I would say Elite, I'd say a good average for me would probably be around like 201 but like I'd say cons I, I'm 
pretty consistent at sub 2 hours. It's usually, if I don't get sub 2 hours, it's usually because one level causes me a lot of issues, and it's usually just one or two. It's not like the entire run. It's just like a couple levels set me far back, but I mean, that's kind of bound to happen with these runs eventually. Like, if you were to do, you know, 10 runs in 10 different days without resetting just 10 80 percent runs, you know, you're not going to get sub 2 every time. You're going to have that one run. Like, I even had a run where I lost like seven different times to one crystal because I just could not get um, get the right kind of RNG my way, but you know, that kind of happens sometimes. Yeah, and you're really going to get to see the, the the type of RNG that is happening in the Sandals crystal here. It's a really good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, you just have to see it. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, when I first played it, I, I just could not believe how horrible it was. Yeah, and I guess before I do that, I can show, I'll just showcase some of the names. So like we got Splash Dash, Dragon Drop, Mallet Mash, Swamp Fox, Keg Kaboom, and Dante's, which is all Warp Five, which you only see in all trophies. Because all trophies, you actually, it's whenever you do the trophy for Dante's, which you see requires 27 trophies. But in order to get to that level, you have to do Gold Relics, and you have to get most of the gems and crystals. So that's just a bonus for a longer category. Yep. Yeah, those those categories, the uh, 200% and all trophy categories are quite long. For real, the the current world record is seven hours and 17 minutes in 200%, and it's actually with a non-optimal character, just because I, I I felt like it, you know. Three, two. There goes Lee with the the not so humble flexing again. He he just can't help himself. <laughs> all right, so, so as you see there, the very first. Yep. So right now. First two balls got turned red, so no points have been scored. Yep, they don't count. It's really fun that way. It's actually kind of good that they don't count because you can't do anything about them. So if they did count, it'd be really bad. Yeah, because the AI are allowed to see. kick them, kick them, but I'm not allowed to kick them. Yep, as you're as you're gonna see, the fact that they don't count means sometimes you can get them really long. So just like kick them right before they go in and turn them red. And there we just saw an impossible ball where I could not get out of the way for that one. <laughs> and that's what makes 200% really brutal because you have to do this level. You have to do every level in 200%. Luckily in all trophies, you can skip, I believe it's one gem and two crystals. Holy moly. <laughs> So in, in all trophies, you can skip two crystals, and you can already bet this is one of them. And the other one that I normally skip is Embolism Crystal, because to me that one is really difficult as well. But most people will skip this one and then Padlock Crystal. But Padlock Crystal is pretty much, if you're good at shooting missiles, you're, you're fine. Because it's basically, you have no color at all, and the only way to score is you have to steal someone's color and then get a box. Yeah, there's some... The Warp 4 uh, crystals are pretty tough. Most of them. <laughs> yeah, for real though. Manic is probably the least stressful. I would yeah, say. I'd say Manic is pretty easy actually. Just the bombs like really do make Manic so much more manageable. Yeah. Than previous four levels. But yeah, this is uh, this is the sideballs crystal. It's it's so hard to react to the, the side AI hitting my balls. At you. It's it's really just a like it's a lot of luck. And if you if you have that reaction speed, I, I don't know how elite does it sometimes. But I, my reaction speed is not really this good. Yeah, one thing that you'd want to keep in mind is sometimes it's beneficial to let a couple balls in on purpose because like if a ball is right next to Kong or Rilla, like. They could turn a red and it will immediately kill you. So like sometimes you'll see me like stay to the left and just like oh like right there it was an impossible one because I couldn't get out of the way. But basically he could turn that one red and you want to stay as far away from it as possible. Yeah, this level's a nightmare. That was really close to winning too. Like that was almost third try. Yeah, that was almost so really good. Yeah, I, I doubt that if, if, uh, if, it's ever, if, if you have time to do this, uh, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way that you get this. See, the, the thing that we could make as an incentive is if I have time to do a couple attempts of this, if if I pass it, then it'd be a good incentive to get some extra donos as like a, a challenge. In all honesty, it might be a good idea to even just have it. I know this sounds stupid, but you can go for it. Maybe you can have it in, in the middle of the run. 
you can just try it like three times or something. But I don't really know. Because you may not, uh, there's almost, I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea to have an incentive be after the run, just because there's no guarantee that you're going to hit your incentive in time. Like, what if the incentives hit, but your estimate is, like, you're close to estimate, or you're, like, a little bit over. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Uh, that's why I'm there's, there's, so, there's so many uh, different options, because as well as you can say to, you know, attempt this crystal, like, once or twice in the actual run, um, it's not guaranteed that you'll even pass it, and then that alone is going to cost you, like, f over four minutes. Right. That's why I'm like, well, you know, maybe it's maybe it would be worth it just, just so that people can see it. Um, and even if it puts you a bit overestimate, like, just like a couple minutes overestimate, uh, that's not so bad. You know, yeah, it, it, but I, yeah, but I mean, my my thing was an incentive would be to showcase this crystal. Not necessarily beat it. Beating it would be like a really big right. bonus, but like it'd be to showcase this. But like, I, I would that's say, a, I said only, only a, attempted like two or three times. A good incentive, honestly, would be uh, Space Bash Crystal No Movement, attempting that one time to see if luck is on my side. That's true. You probably, you probably should just do that. That, that's like like uh, TK was saying. That's like the bread and butter. Yeah, that's like so, everyone's favorite. I think that that's a good one too. It's like really funny just because. And I it's and so I obvious. honestly I might as well showcase that because I'm gonna submit this and I just want to get all the good ideas out right away. So I'm gonna after I I might just give up on this after a little bit, but um I may or may not edit some of this out because I want to get this uh, space bash in there as well. So I might give this a couple more tries and then go straight to space bash and then show off what the uh, no movement would look like which would be a good time for donations but it would make for some pretty good content too yep yeah we could we could talk about like uh, the bash community occasionally i would say like every six months it seems uh, does a win 100 times on Space Bash Crystal without moving and like in a single like speed run. <laughs> yeah, it's so really just like a time to get like some some beers out and uh, you know voice chat with the guys while you you just you, you don't even really play the game. You just you enter the level. That's the amount of level playing that's happening. But it's a it's a it's a meme pastime type of run uh, that a lot of Bash runners have come to really enjoy. Yeah, so I've already done my part, so basically this would be another incentive where it would be either one or two attempts. I don't, I, you wouldn't really go too far because then you wouldn't reach the incentive, but basically you'd do just one or two attempts of no movement, and it would be another one of those things, like, if we get it, then something happens, like a donation or something, like, that'd be cool, like, a good challenge. But, it's just all up to the AI. Yep. Yeah, he has no control over this whatsoever. I think uh, they allow taunting in the official rules. <laughs> uh, they, they, they do not actually. Do they not? Oh nope, because then it's not no movement. Oh man. Oh, there goes. Yep. <laughs> yep. So now it's just up. So now it's just up to Brio, which oh, if he makes his way to those TNT, we have a good chance. Or or if he jumps on one of the nights. Oh, there he goes. He's, in the patch. He's going crazy. The pumpkin patch over there. <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> Yeah, I think this is... Oh, well, he might kill you. I'm not really sure what's going on anymore. Yeah, so one thing to note is a lot of times the AI will only move in, like, weird, like, not... A kind of diagonal, like, you can see he's kind of moving, like, diagonally only counterclockwise, which is why he's kind of moving in a weird pattern. Yeah, and maybe if we get lucky here, he'll get trapped on an island, and you'll get to see what that looks like. It's hilarious. The AI doesn't know what to do when there's only one block, so they kind of just spin in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> there's some really weird AI interactions that you get to see just watching the AI, like, behave on this crystal. Yeah, it didn't look like he got very lucky here, he just kind of... We at least got two AI. Here. A lot of times, if Brio's the last one alive or Kong, they'll just kill you because they have such a big throw radius that they'll just... Oh, well there goes Rilla. And the nice thing is, like, it is a crystal, so they will target you more than the other AI, but they still go for each other occasionally, which is nice. Yeah, thankfully they don't only target you. But as you can see, with the no movement, because, because you can't do anything, like, uh, there's just... You're just sort of at the mercy of the game, ho hoping that they, like, jump on a nitro, or jump into a hole, just like, uh, Brio like right there. Yep. 
So if Kong yeah, if Kong gets free and he goes towards like the top of the top right of the screen towards the TNTs like that, we have a chance because basically he's gonna eventually go towards the nitros and he can't quite reach me yet. As soon as the TNT spawns near me, that's when it's gonna be game over. Yeah, like that. If he goes to that TNT at the right, at the left there, it's definitely game over. So we we really don't want that. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three, yeah, we'll, two, we'll see if we can get one just like I tried for us uh, for sky balls a little bit This would be a better incentive just because this one actually has a better shot at winning But then again, I have one shot at sky balls crystal a lot But like I haven't one shot at it more than not It's either you get good RNG the first five attempts or you get bad RNG Yeah, like like I said the bad community does a speed round of a hundred times winning no movement so the chances of winning this are quite a bit higher than it may seem. It's even the, at least getting quite unlucky right now. Although they're all grouping up, so this looks really favorable. Yes, it does. That you just gotta hope that Brio like falls and all, like accidentally like, falls on, on a or something. Yeah, because so, like, Kong is one. He has no HP, so if him and Brio get together, Brio can zap him and it'll be over. But you gotta it, hope that Kong tries to throw an at him. Yeah, oh, that was so close. He actually just missed the, the pile. Brio was standing on there. But yeah, this is looking pretty hopeless once again. <laughs> oh, Brio's got the nitro. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, maybe. This is looking favorable. Oh, that nitro is kind of the last hope in my opinion, but... Yeah, because now there's no more TNT, so it's probably over. Unless he accidentally jumps on the corner of a hole and just falls in. It could happen, but yeah, this is looking pretty rough. Oh man, you're getting some really bad luck on these no movement. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say this is this is what it is now. We just get to watch Rio not play the game. Yep. The worst is if like AI die right off the bat and you have like over a minute remaining with one guy left and then they do all that, because then it's just a minute of them moving around. And right, okay, there we go. Save. We don't want Rilla to be next to us because he'll literally just run in circles and tail whip you until you die, which will be long but painful. <laughs> that's that's gotta be one of those like slow ways to die. Yep. This is looking really good though. They'll Dude, never get you. Yeah, they're all but... one one nitro away from death, so this is actually looking very nice. Oh, I thought Brio was gonna start spinning on that one tile. Oh, he almost did. Okay, so it's just Brio again. Luckily this time he's only one hit, so he could he could die. He get lucky here. Hello, he's got the stupid octane mask. Oh, it's gone now. Oh, I feel like it's we won. No. Oh wait. No, we didn't. Oh my gosh. He's he's going crazy. He's gonna fall on a ledge. He's he's gonna fall. There's no way. He's still. Come on, hit. get pick that up. There we go. We gotta win. We got one. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Winning without moving. This is like that Luigi meme. You know, Luigi wins with doing absolutely nothing. Yep. That's All right. The, this is the Bash version of that. Absolutely. Alright, but yeah, that's showcasing both the uh, Skyball's Crystal and then Space Bash No Movement Crystal.